think I'm, I think I'm in the shop pretty we're good, well. We're good. We're good. You want to sit in your spot? Huh? Nah. Cool. You see this thing? Fucking yeah. Scare people with that thing. Is every that day. is that an actual taxidermy cat? <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, it's a real, it. a real. Wow, that's Perfect. a real cat. We found it in my fucking uh, father-in-law's. Uh, he found he like they were moving here. Yeah. He found it at a garage sale. Okay. I'm like that's so weird and awesome. It's and that's that's not one of your cats though. No, no. Okay, I was gonna say like I get the I get having cats, but taxidermy a cat that's that's the next level up above cat lady, right? Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's good. I uh because you know I was showing you that I I'm like making hoodies right now. Yep. My uh my mom like she did everything with uh fabric curtains, you know upholstery, yeah. all that shit. So I was actually, during lockdown, like, you know, you saw my cat castle or whatever. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I wanted to do was, like, because I was in a, I'm in a black metal. Okay. Yep. Was, uh, here, I'm just double checking. I hit record on here. Yeah. Cool. I was, um, I was going to start making hoodies with uh, coyote head. Okay. Them. Yeah. And, um, but they're a bitch to sew because the only people you can buy coyote skins from are like hunters who tanned them wrong. Okay. So the flesh is like falling apart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had, I mean, I had a lady manage to do it, my mom's old worker, but she said she's like, this was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looked like that 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 couch that that old lady rotted into, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, rotten, rotten flesh hoodies. I mean, honestly, that might be the most punk metal thing you could ever have. Yeah, It's right? an actual rotting flesh piece of clothing like yeah, yeah that might win if you're at a concert like everyone thinks like they're the most metal person there and then some guy wearing the dead flesh of an animal like that's well the thing is i was always worried about it. you go to a concert like that and there's going to be that one psycho vegan that oh yeah that shit off. that's true yeah so. that might cause a little bit of an uproar you know yeah i don't think they would really much like that I, I i feel like i wouldn't fit in in like like metal concerts stuff like that where there's like mosh pits and everything yeah i went to like riot fest recently out in chicago yeah and I don't know. Some people were like moshing and stuff, like throwing arms around, flailing around, punching each other and stuff. But it's not really my. I don't like being in crowds like that where people are all angry listening to music and stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Did, wh- who did you? You went this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yep. Went all three days? No, just just on a Saturday. I I actually didn't even know it was like a thing until like the day before that. Who? Did, uh, who? Like, what made you want to go? Like, who did you want to see? It, I didn't want to go at all. Actually, <laughs> I, I didn't even want to go. My my girlfriend and her friends and and some other people were going. So. Did it was you, either that or sit at home. So, did, did you see anybody you you liked there? I saw. Um, Why well, can't I think of it? Um, Bowling for Soup. Mm. Bowling for Soup was there, and they were they were fun, dude. They put on a fun show. Dude, it was cool. It is, it is so funny because I have a friend named Mike who used to be an EMT. Okay. Now he's a firefighter. He has the same mustache and like face make. He, uh, other other than he he was bald at like sixteen. Okay. So, yep. Yep. But he. Uh, he all he listens to is like ska okay right and, I, and i'm yeah. like and, and not like because i used to be into that like british non-racist skinhead shit okay. yeah yeah which is real ska it's a good def that's a good uh you got to make sure you say the non-racist skinheads, yeah, yeah you know uh but uh he you know he listens to like that poppy like real big fish and shit and i'm yeah, like yeah. bro man i can't believe i'm going to the gym and i'm blasting some whatever rotting flesh coyote hood band <laughs> and you're and you're like you know what i'm trying to think of a song like never thought i'd knock on wood <laughs> but i know someone who has yeah yeah makes me wonder if i could it's like that's that's your workout really <laughs> yeah yeah 1985 by bowling for soup you're going to work out to that mm. oh man yeah, I, I listen to a good amount of stuff. I guess and I listen to like is, a lot. Is of Bowling for Soup? That's the band that like the drummer's like real morbidly obese, right? He was big. I mean, the singer out. They were all pretty big, but they're also oh, okay. old. They've been doing it for a while. Yeah, I just that's how I m- remember. Yeah, what I wouldn't. Band was I wouldn't say he was morbidly obese, but I mean, we were far away, so maybe he was bigger than I than I thought he was, or something like that. But they they were all they were all big. They were old. They've been doing it for a long time. You know, I think they yeah, did, yeah. peaked at a certain point. You know. Yeah, you know what I always found funny? Like, I, I watch those videos on, like, old, like, the evolution of Ska. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this, and I completely forgot about this shit. There was, like, a little revival of Big Band okay. when The Mask came out. Right. You remember that band, Cherry Pop and Daddies? I don't I don't think I've ever heard of them, no. It was They had one hit, and it was so fucking weird, because it was just, like, 
punky big band, like punky Frank Sinatra music in the 90s is is the goofiest shit ever. That's an interesting blend of things right there. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I listen to a lot of stuff, though. I I don't know. I I feel like that's like a classic white guy thing to be like, oh, I I like everything. But I don't know. You know, I, I like country. I like rap. I like you know, metal, rock, whatever it is. I'll yeah, yeah. Whatever. You know. I'm I'm such a picky bitch where it's like, I'll I'll be in love with like the most brutal. Like my favorite black metal band is Watain. Okay. They've been banned from countries because they have like dead animals on stage and shit. And I like that band, but then people are like, "Oh, so you like you know this list of no? They all suck." Yeah. I just like this one band. <laughs> it's the music that I like. You know. Yeah. 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 Because it, with music like that, it all sounds so much the same. You kind of have to like find the expert of it, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Same with like that's how I feel like about rap too. Like I like like Gucci Mane, yeah. and Riff Raff, but other than that, it's like all one hit wonders to me. I don't yeah, know. yeah, I could see it. And it's hard to you know you you go through like a like a whole rap album. There could be a lot of misses, you know. Mm-hmm. But then the the hits are such big hits, and I guess it could be hard to kind of top that. There's not so much consistency. Yeah. In that, I guess. I never realized how many angry white dudes like Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I I, I like I like some of his songs. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely not the, the person to come to for like rap opinions or anything like that. Yeah. But I do like him. He was good. And the other thing I didn't realize, you know, he's like just over like four feet tall. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Are you serious? He's small as, I mean, maybe not four feet, but he's small as fuck. No cause, shit. Because I saw a, um, a, lot of, a lot of rappers, they have like private like shows where it's like at a black club you know yeah yeah yeah. and i saw a video of him at he was at some private black club in chicago yeah and there was like this i'm like man that bitch is tall because she was front row she was the same height as him and and he's on stage i was like no he's really small yeah like oh maybe that's why a bunch of angry white dudes are listening to kendrick because they're short and they're mad about it and they're like yeah this guy's angry too maybe that's why kendrick is so mad that Actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think about it. Huh. Well shit, we didn't do the intro. Oh this is Wild Phil with Wild Phil's Osophy. I'm all over the place on my mind today. Had too much coffee. We got Matt Michalski. That's the Polish pronunciation. Right. Yeah, Michalski is how uh my family botched it a long time ago. How but d- how, is is that how you tell people? Yeah, m- like Michelle went to ski, Michelski, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Most people just get it wrong and I'm I'm fine with it. So Yeah, I I always told that's why I go by Wild Phil because I'm like no one's gonna pronounce Lishetsky. Yeah, yeah, I. You know. Yeah, I couldn't. I was like, I was like, uh, what is it? Um, and the funny thing is, you know what, Li- you know what Lishetsky translates to? What's that? Like Polish names are so goofy. It, it literally translates to Foxy. No so shit. Like Foxy Phil. Foxy guy. Yeah. Or like Fox like. That could have been your. That could have been your name, Foxy yeah. Phil. <laughs> yeah. Foxy Phil. And uh, yeah, it's so funny. Or like my my aunt was. Her for her first husband was Podgorska, okay. which is the most metal thing ever. Like, do you speak Polish at all? No, not a lick. It's uh, it means from underneath the mountain. Oh, that's sick. That's <laughs> so cool. That's I like that a lot. I should look up what what Michelski is. I don't, I don't or Michalski, I guess. I don't. I don't know. It's probably something dumb. Mich- Michalski is just um, it's weird because Miha Mihao is just how you say Michael. Okay. So it's almost like Michael like, which is funny because you're like my friend Mike. Yeah, you know? yeah that's my dad's name too. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never had the pronunciation right. Never had, you know, none of that. I, I just let people say it however they want. To be mm-hmm. honest, at this point, I've thought about using like a stage name, but I don't know. It feels kind of self-absorbed to be like. It is, dude. Like, it's absolutely. I, I can't choose a name for myself. You know, even just changing my last name. Like I thought about it being like Matt Monroe or something like that, but I don't know. I just can't change my. I don't know. It just seems weird to me. Wild Phil. That that's got a ring to it, though. You know, mm. that, I like that. I but. just I just thought of it, and, and you can shit on it if you want. I don't care, uh, but um, cause cause everybody like uh, I just you know what I thought about it was like w- at the time where I was about to start comedy, I was like, what's my favorite comedian? It was Big J Okerson. Okay, yeah. So I was like, well, big, you know, just an adjective, and then the name sounds kind of cool. Yeah. And yeah, like nobody nobody could pronounce my fucking name, you know. But then, it, but you know, you know, I had people that I was talking to, you know, like Ken Flores. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, Ruben Ramirez. Ramirez, yeah. yeah. You know what they used to be? What's that? Fucking Ken Flores used to be too skinny. That was his name. Okay. Yeah. And then Ruben used to be uh, like Baby Orchata. Okay. And they and they were the ones that said they didn't tell me personally, but I've heard from other people that like 
when when bookers saw that shit, they're like, "This guy's a douchebag." I'm not. Gotcha. I'm not booking. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think because I still have my name in it, it's not that. That's bad. That's a little different. Yeah. And now that I have a fucking neon light that yeah, I paid six hundred dollars for it, I'm not changing. You're kind of stuck. You're kind of stuck with Wild Phil now. You <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. You're like we're not gonna book you. Like fuck, dude. I don't know. You look at the light. You're like fuck. I don't know. I. You know. I was talking to Tom Feedback. He's like, I had a Polish girlfriend, and she was cheap about everything. Which is so funny because, yeah, the reason why I'm not changing my name is financially, <laughs> you know, I'm driven. in debt to this sign right now. This <laughs> sign is running my life, dude. Yeah, no, I'm I not, you know, not crazy on the stage name. I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't really have like a, I don't post a whole lot on social media with like comedy and stuff like that. So I'm not trying to like yeah. build too much of a following or anything. But, you know. It, it, most people say Machalski or Machalski. Yeah, and you can you can figure it out from there. Yeah, you know, like how to spell it for the most part. I I used to tell people it was Lyseki because okay. one, you know, everybody re, like when like like what did people what what name did people make up for you when they bullied you? Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski. Yeah, like that was they called me. So when I was a kid, I would ride the bus, and people would call me Mike Wazowski. Mm-hmm. And there was another kid. But what is on, Wazowski? What is that? Like it's from uh, uh, Monsters Inc. Mike Wazowski. Oh, oh, I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. they, yeah, they, were, you know, the one-eyed green guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would call me Mike Wazowski, like old Matt Michalski, Mike Wazowski, so funny. Yeah. But there was another kid on the bus named Mike Lukowski. It sounded so much more like Mike Wazowski, but they still called me Mike Wazowski. I'm like, what? Call, call that guy Mike Wazowski. His name's yeah. Mike, but they still call it to me. That that irritated me more than being called Mike Wazowski in the first place. Yeah, you know? yeah. I just I was called. Phil lies about being sexy instead of <laughs> oh, lies <God>. sexy. <laughs> lies about being sexy. And, and, and we're doing a roast battle soon, so I'm, I'm, that one's for free. <laughs> okay, there, there you go. <laughs> it's lies so shitty. Be- that's a stretch. <laughs> lies about being. That's that's a mouthful. I feel like halfway through the joke of li- you're like, all right, all right, you, you've you've had enough. Now. Yeah, yeah. When I when I had to explain to people how to pronounce it, I go Lee Shitsky. So imagine Bruce Lee is locked out of the bathroom and he's got diarrhea. Lee's shits key. You know, ah, yeah, there you but, go. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. What the what was I gonna say? Um, I yeah, I, f- I learned Lyseki because that's what my football coach used to scream. Okay, yeah. So the and and I, I yeah, that was traumatizing because he fucking he had those Jeffrey Dahmer orange tint glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had a mouth like a like a fist filled with dip oh yeah so anytime he screamed you'd, you'd get that a little a few spicy hey, saliva drips yeah. in your eye don't like that so uh just yeah but um it's like it's like some scene from matilda you know? yeah yeah absolutely but uh um so yeah um I, I always start out the show with like what happened in the past two weeks yeah um yeah i mean you can you can start because i got fucking mouthful you know? yeah yeah my 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 weeks haven't been quite as eventful as, as yours have i'm sure um I was I was just working quite a bit. Um, you know, I I've, I've been um, I I work as a firefighter paramedic and yeah. um yeah, you know, I I've, I've been trying to get some time off this month. So, to get time off, I trade shifts with people and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I work a lot and then I don't work a lot. You know, I, I get that time off on the back end. Yeah. So, just just been a lot of working on shift and uh, you know, obviously going to open mics. I haven't had any really shows lately or anything like that. So, Yeah. Just working, nothing crazy. Uh, getting woken up all night and on shift and everything, and uh, yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing too much, you know. Okay, yeah, I um, so I may as well get started. Yeah, I, 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 I know you're you're chomping at the bit to get into this, the yeah, jiffy little bit. Yeah, because dude, this is fucking okay. So the the I, I mean I got a whole eight minute polished bit out of it. So, okay, there you go. Hey, but content. Uh, that's the that's the half glass full way yeah. of looking at. But um, yeah, no, I so so. I want I want everyone to know that this is a hundred. You know, people they always say there's like your side of the story, their side of the story, and then the absolute truth. Yeah, I have no reason to like benefit from lying. So, but what happened is uh, I was I was looking for, you know, I hadn't worked since January. I was a welder, okay. and I didn't know what to get into. But my friend. Uh, my co-host Carlos, he was telling me he's like, dude, you should get into used car sales because you know those. You ever take one of those? Well, probably not because you got a steady job. But you ever? I, I have a few people like our age that they took like one of those midlife crisis tests where they're like, according to my personality and skills, yeah, what job would suit me best? Right. Dude, I did that three times. Every time it was either lawyer or car salesman, 
And I, dude, I, I used to love fucking debate class. Yeah. So I, I could be a lawyer, but with like tattooed hands and a mullet. I was going to say, I, I wouldn't be super confident if you're walking in for my DUI <laughs> yeah. case. Be like, I think this guy's got a DUI too. So mm-hmm. I'd be representing like fucking, I look like I'd represent like Kyle Rittenhouse or something. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You know? Yeah. And uh, so, but, so yeah, I'm like, why, why? So I talked to my friend. He's like, dude, don't ever fucking work for a corporate place because corporate car sales, dude, the most you can get profit is like $1,000 because yeah. you can't really barter a set brand new price right and then he's like the only money you make is that bullshit you want some undercoat sprayed yeah and yep. literally he told me two percent of all sales the entire year get that oh shit so the other thing is if you don't stay there you know you get paid like either full commission or like salary yeah if you don't stay there like the old school guys from like 9 a.m to 9 p.m they'll fucking you'll come in monday and they'll make you like hand wash all the cars and shit <laughs> So, anyways, so I go to the I go to a few used car places. I went to a motorcycle place, and they're like, you know, you seem like you could do this job well, uh, but I hate to break it to you, motorcycle season's over. Yeah. So you know, give us a fucking you know, give us a call back next summer, or whatever. So on the way back, you know, I'm like, just picture me moping around, kicking a can. Yep, like, what yep. am I gonna do? I drive by a Jiffy Lube. It says hiring urgently, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. Let's see how much they pay, you know? I go in there. Can you guess what they pay? Oof. I If it's a Jiffy Lube, I'm thinking like, well, like 20 bucks an hour or something like that. 13. Thir- oh, my God. Oh, That's fucking was, minimum was, wage. Like, so I walked in there, and I'm like, yeah, how much? They go 13. I'm like, all right, man, I'm not doing this. And this is all part of my bit. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing this. He goes, yeah, but, dude, you could be a manager. I'm like, Re- really? Me? I could be a manager. He's like, yeah, dude, we'll make you. I mean, you got experience, man. You got you fucking. But if you've been in a union, you, you could do this. I'm like, okay, but uh, I have a sleep disorder. I can only work like nine to sit. Like I can only start at nine. They're like, perfect for us. We'll work with that. I literally didn't want this job so bad that I was like, I I smoke weed once every two months. Like I have this ritual where we watch like a stupid movie. Yeah. And smoke. I don't like smoking around people. Like I just, anyways. So I'm just like, well, I don't know if I'll pass the drug test. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we don't test. I'm like, fine. Give me the fucking job. <laughs> I'll take you know? it. I'll take it. But the thing was, I didn't realize the guy who runs it in where I was, which was Rolling Meadows. Yeah. Dude, he runs it as tight as a fucking whistle. Yeah. He's He's got it. He's so cool over that. He has like a socialist perspective. Mm-hmm. So each month, Jiffy Lube has like a profit bonus yeah. where like whatever you sell. He's so cool. That he splits, like say say that month you made twenty grand in profit, he splits that bonus equally with every fucking person. No kidding. So that every person is like, yo, if this guy's being a fucking asshole, get him out of here because yeah. he's not part of the team. Th- th- so the place where he gave me, dude. So communism can work on the scale of a Jiffy Lube mm, is what you're saying. Yeah, that's why it's red. <laughs> but, but uh, uh, so um, so he goes, yeah. There's this place in Lombard. It's it's uh, this the guy's over there. He's dying. He he need he needs workers. So you know you have uh, time sensitive information to yeah. fill out. Yep. I'm like I can't turn this shit in. It says in 48 hours they're not going to accept me. But my man, I don't know where the fuck to get a hold of my manager. Yeah. He goes, yeah, dude, your manager, he's in uh he's in a hospital because he got beat up by a crackhead. Oh. <laughs> so, and and when I heard what actually happened. And this is actually, like, I ranted about this to my friends. Yeah. And they think I sound like a guy who would represent Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, yep, yep. But this, this is the actual truth. You know you know who Kim Fox is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for, for people who don't know, Kim Fox is like, I don't know her exact title. Couldn't tell. I just politician, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and she's in, like, Cook County. And, and what she does is she passed this law that's like, you know, for people who are a victim of their own environment, they get a second chance. Okay. So you could, like, hold a gun to someone's face. There, there was somebody who, like, robbed somebody, carjacked somebody with a gun, crashed the car into the side of a building, and they got out in, like, 10 days. So, because because they need a second chance. Hey, you know what? So, uh um, Second chance to get another car? Or- yeah. <laughs> yeah. This time he won't crash into a building. Exactly. Yeah, he'll get, maybe he'll, he'll get another chance to get away this time, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um... What happened with my boss 
there was this i guess that corner where i was working the story is that um there's all these crackheads that go there and they try to bait any corporate company like they did it to white castle they did it to mcdonald's they did it to chipotle they try to bait you so that if you hit them they can sue okay so th- this guy came over there my boss immediately called the cops cops come drop him off three blocks oh like later he comes back for revenge this time like he like and he was getting he was getting in my boss's face he was like flicking his nose oh he was putting his sunglasses on him and then he finally lost it when he flicked him in the eye and that's when they started you know wwf in the jiffy loop parking yeah, lot yep. and uh which is so hilarious because the whole time i'm thinking like do i have to chop my mullet i'm like dude Fuck no. Yeah. I'm going to tell the workers to play my entrance theme music yep, when I yep. go out there and wrestle this crackhead, you know? But um, what happened is he got him in a headlock, and he slammed his head on the edge of a sidewalk, Oh, which busted his head open, and it dislocated his shoulder. Oh. He tore a ligament in his oh, shoulder. Oh, man. And so this bum is like, oh, shit, I'm losing this fight. I can't sue them. So he runs across the street, across like four lane traffic, and he just punches a random McDonald's worker. Oh in the man, face. come on! So, um, meanwhile, this whole time, I'm gonna tell you, the workers they didn't do shit. They're all these pussy ass Zoomers with the broccoli haircut. Oh yeah, they're yeah. just like, oh, we're gonna get this on TikTok, you know? So here's so here's here's what happened. I'm working there, and I'm just like, I cannot. I've never worked at a place where managers get zero respect yeah i literally i walked in there and they're like uh what what was it like the first day i walked in the manager like can you please we have we have new uh he was he was a arabian guy he's like can you please mop the hallway my his arms in a sling he's like we have customers he's like bitch i'm a fucking mop that shit when i want motherfucker oh (laughs) man and i'm like what is go is this Tyler Perry's, you know, (laughs) what the fuck is happening here? You know, so so yeah, I had a so the other thing that made me butt heads there. Every location normally has one AGM, okay, but they had another AGM, and he was butting heads with me because he was jealous that like I went to school to be a manager, right? And he's like, he's like, why are you doing all these things? Why are you following the rules? All these things, so. This is where shit gets wild. Fucking, well, more wild. Yeah. Um, I, apparently, there's just a shitload of losers who go to UTI, which isn't a uh, new thing. That's not a new. That's not news. Universal Technical Institute, right? Yeah. yeah. No, University of Tract Infections. <laughs> and uh, the DeVry of something worse than DeVry. Oh, yeah. man. So, and, and I didn't know that these people come from out of state to go there. Like it's like a the the Harvard of the Midwest. It's know? the community college of mechanical schools. That's, yeah. Ugh. So so there's so so what happened is when I started working there, I, I was just completely confused because number one, like the shop is a fucking mess. Yeah. The entire bay, I'm not joking. There was a leaking tank. So and it and and the thing is this, this is how like frugal Jiffy Lube is. You know that like foam spray. Yeah. Uh, all you really got to do is you empty the tank and there's an industrial version and it takes like a week to cure, but they cannot stand shutting down for a week. So instead we just have this ever leaking tank. So every fucking, anybody who goes in the bay is like Marv in home alone. Oh, Cause man. there's a centimeter of oil across yeah. the entire floor. Oh. I don't, I mean, I mean, if, if somebody smokes cigarettes, you just, we'd go up in flames. Yeah. You know? So. We had these two brats there. One of them was uh, I call him Oscar the Grouch, because he was just he was it, it was just this young Mexican kid from Michigan who just hated everything. Right. Every I f- fuck this fucking garbage can, man. It fucking says made in China. We're in USA. Like he just bitched about fuck this fucking window, man. He just bitched about everything. I'm like, dude, who molested you? Like, you're this <laughs> angry, you know? And then there was this like redneck type kid from Wisconsin. He was all right. The problem was, is all these kids that go from this school, number one, they think that they're, they know everything about cars. Right. And number two, like, they exploited the company because 
the rush hours, like between noon and, you know, th- like when you get out of work. Yeah. They they come in from, you know, whatever open to like noon, then go to school during the rush hour and then come back when it's slow again. Yeah. So you're not even fucking doing anything. <sighs> you know, like talk about they keep talking about, oh, this is great wrench time. You're not you're not doing shit. There's no cars. <laughs> wrench time. Uh, it sounds like somebody who's like in school for something that they think is cool, but it's really not. Like, oh, dude, yeah. let's get some fucking wrench time in, dude. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get more wrench time like opening, you know, a uh, little rascal's oil shop in a trailer park. Yeah, you know? exactly, dude. So, um so here's what happened. I'll just I'll just get right to the meat of it cuz I'm just, I could it was the shit that I saw. I mean, it was just like nobody fucking wore their uniform. We had these things that are called CBTs. Okay. So you're supposed to do I'm sure like cuz you were an EMT. Yeah. You know, you have like different training that you have to do. Yeah. Or like a security guard, you got to do training to carry cuffs you got to do training to carry a taser Mm -hmm. so we had this training where like the first week you got to do the training for rotating tires then the next week you got to get it done by to to learn how to change oil then the next week radiator flush whatever so here's the funny here's how ghetto my location is we're supposed to so there's uh lube shops and there's multi-care okay two different franchises multi-care will do anything yeah Multi care Jiffy Loops. Us, we're supposed to do oil, radiator, transmission, rotate tires, uh, brake fluid. Yeah. And I think, and wipers. Right. Our shop only did oil and radiator flushes. And I'm like, why don't we rotate tires? He's like, man, that's $20. I ain't doing that shit. Oh, come on. So they literally, he's like, I'm fucking tired. I'm like, so we're not, we're not doing these other things just because you're, just because you, the other general manager is tired. I'm. Uh, th- this is uh, fucking like. It's like complimentary at some places to rotate tires. Yeah. With an oil change, like that's just what you do when you do the oil change, let alone for well, a fee. Bro, well, I I just couldn't. I've never worked at a place that was like this. Right. Then this other guy, bro, it was fucking. We had this uh, one gangbanger, who, I don't know how. He was not well. I found out why he wasn't fired, and that's because Jiffy Loop doesn't like to do paperwork, so he would just not show up for three days at a time. Never wears. He came into work with all J- Jordan gear. Yeah, Jordan jersey, Jordan shorts, Air Jordans. This motherfucker never does the lower bay, and he took three Xanax. So, so we go, hey man, can you drain the the oil drain? And we and we had you got to drain into a bucket and pour it into a vacuum yeah just sprayed in his face oh he he, he, he looked like he had black face <laughs> oh no and he's like man i don't get paid enough to get fucking oil all over my jordan shit i'm like who wears jordan shit like you're, you're gonna you're wearing basketball shoes slipping on, on a centimeter of oil yeah you know? like that's the that, that they make coveralls to cover what you he could have worn it if he wanted to and put something over it yeah but he just had to be Looking, he's got to cool. be. He's got to be thug. Oh man! Because you know, Tupac and Biggie worked at Jiffy Lube. Hey, yeah, the, you know that's where it all starts. So, Jiffy yeah. Lube. That's where dreams start at Jiffy Lube. You know, it was all a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I don't know what rhymes with dream. That would be. <laughs> but um, so so here's so here's exactly the meat of it. Here's what happened. What I found out is these guys would so so these guys would constantly disrespect the GM, the Arabian guy with a sling. Yeah, tell him that he got it. I mean, bro, if you got fucking beat up by a crackhead on the job, and your coworkers are like making fun of you for it, he was defending him, dude. He's defending the land. He's yeah. defending the the home territory. But but I'm like, wouldn't you be like traumatized? Most people, do, I've I've been in a lot of fights. But most people, like, can you imagine going every day? Man, you got your ass kicked. Yeah, right. Like, what the. F- so who the fuck like where did they learn respect right you know so what these uti kids did is they uh they told everybody at their school yo man there's this one shop you can do whatever the fuck you want the manager's a bitch and they just kept rolling in in this trash and so um one this this particular day the first incident Oh, and here's here's another thing that I couldn't believe. Like th- this this just fucking baffles me. You're not supposed to even say fuck you to your own general manager, right? Yeah. You know what this you know what this guy did? So there's certain foreign cars like Mercedes, Audi, BMW. We don't have the tools 
to to work on them okay. because those company or like you know how like Tesla they purposely make parts that only the dealership can use the tools so that they can make the money. Gotcha. So for us to do it, you kind of have to like jerry rig a tool. You have to like it's sort of like instead of using the proper wrench, you use vice grips. Okay. Type right. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy this this uh, Chinese guy comes in with one of those Mercedes SUVs and he's like, "You know, I need a oil change." And those little br- those brats, they're just like, "Yeah, we're, we're not qualified to do this. We don't have the parts." And my manager's like, "Well, we have to make our quota." So we're going to do it. And he's like, all right, well, then you're going to do it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not touching that thing. So the fucking manager, who's not even supposed to step on the floor, he has a broken shoulder and a sling, had to do the entire job while you have commentary from these, like, spoiled-ass Zoomers. Oh, man. The whole fucking time. And the thing that we couldn't do was we didn't have the key for the for the filter. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know if you know how oil filters look. Usually you could twist it off with your hand. Yeah. Or with... Uh, um. With a ratchet wrench, this a Mercedes one. It has like this weird, like hexagonal bit that yeah. you have to use. So he goes, yeah. So he tells the the owner, he's like, yo, listen, we can change your oil, but we cannot change the filter. You're gonna have to if we if we do it, you're gonna have a claim. It's gonna fuck our company over. It's gonna fuck up your car. So he he's like, fine, just do it. Leaves the leaves the place. Next day, his car is smoking. Oh, comes back. Gets greeted by Oscar the Grouch going, I knew it, man. My manager fucked up your car. That's that's how he that's what he oh, said. Man. I'm like, how do you how do you not get fired right there? Good face of the company right there. You yeah. Know? So anyways. What ended up happening is I ended up fixing the car. Okay. And he was pissed. Yeah. Because he kept telling me, he's like, Man, you don't even know shit about cars. And I'm like, I know I don't. He's like, So why are you working here? I'm like, well, I play, and I like, he had like a panic attack. I go, well, I played Mechanic Simulator on Xbox, <laughs> and that's all I needed to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turns out it was just the same thing they teach at UTI. Exactly. I guess. <laughs> exactly, dude. So, so, uh, um, so I, so, so I fixed the car. Anyways, so here, so here's finally, finally, we're getting to the meat of the incident. These, these fucking, these two brats at UTI, they bring in two other brats that want to apply. Okay. They come in the, they come in the shop. I couldn't stop laughing because the first thing this guy said, he goes, yo, man, you got some nice jewelry. I'm telling you, man, I know all the hoods in Indiana. We got the best jewelry in the world. I'm like, really, man? I wish I would have known. You know, I got married four years ago. I was looking at Italy, (laughs) New York. I could have gone to fucking Gary, Indiana. Oh, man. You know, so... I'm sure they got some kind of rocks that it's are It's got to be the good stuff. Oh, good everything stuff. good comes out of Gary, Indiana, yeah. you know? It's the rocks that you smoke that yeah. come out of, you know. <laughs> but uh, so so I just, I couldn't take this kid seriously. But anyways, listen, just side disclaimer. Yeah, I'm Wild Phil, but when I'm at a job, I'm 100% professional. Tame like, Phil. Tame Phil, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't swear, I don't, whatever, you know, fucking... I, I try to be professional because it's a it's the Polish in me, you know. It's just like you 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 don't bring in your bull, you don't bring in religion, politics, all that bullshit into work. You, you don't. just work and then you go home and you drink. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so I so I'm a uh, this day the GM wasn't there. I have to train these two new hirees. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I go, hey guys, this, this is exactly word for word what I said. I go, I'm just letting you know. We, there's there's the what whatever you think is the right way of doing things and then there's whatever the thing whatever you think is the wrong way but we do things here the jiffy lube way it's like the fuck is that supposed to mean i'm like well you guys from eti you come here and you kind of act like know-it-alls and i'm just letting you know this is a fucking like he's like he's like i don't know what the fuck it sounds like you're talking shit and i'm just like okay here's what i'm saying i got nothing to say about uti but you're you're going to let's say you're right you're going to a school that's taught by Gordon Ramsay, and you're working at a Little Caesars. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And he couldn't fucking understand that. And th- and then I also told him, I'm just like, you know, like you already think that you can tune up pistons on on a word for word. What I said is, we're working on Camrys, and you're acting like we're working on a fucking Ferrari. Yeah. That's the word. That's the, exactly what I said. Exactly what he reported to HR. 
He's still trying to figure out who Gordon Ramsay is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I listen to his beats. Man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I know that guy. Shit. So, this, this sounds so racist, but it's just like, bro, th- this is the kind of people that I had to deal with. Yeah. And, and not, I don't know anybody else who's dealt with this kind of job. So, anyway, so I tell this to these guys. And then they step out of the room, you know, and we're just small talking. And I literally, here's what I said, because, bro, I already told him, I don't know shit about cars. I'm, yeah. I'm fucking humble when, when I don't know shit. And I'm just like, yo, so what, you know, it seems like you guys are really pumped about UTI. And I'm just curious, like, is there a reason you chose that over, like, Lincoln Tech or DeVry? Like, what makes UTI? He goes, oh, man, because they got this program in one year. I'm gonna have a contract to work for Porsche and make 400 grand a year, <laughs> and, and I just burst out laughing. That's the that's the first time I did something unprofessional. Yeah, I I couldn't help. I'm like, dude, do they teach you basic math? Because <laughs> that means in three years you're gonna have a million dollars. Yeah, w- where does all that money go to fucking divorces and opiates? <laughs> you know, like so so. He, he got mad he's like he's like he's like man you just talking shit and i'm like no i'm telling you this I, I i know i sound like i'm having a boomer lecture but i've wor- i've done welding for 15 years yeah i've never worked at a place other than the union that told that paid me exactly what they posted yeah it's a good point you know even even how you're saying like because i'm looking for a job now like even even like the paramedic, you know, yeah. they'll say they pay you thirty five an hour, but they'll start you at eighteen. Yeah, yeah. And and that happened to me with every welding job. Well, that's the private ambulances though that'll that'll do that. Fire departments usually union too, so they're what the, what they post is what you get. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of those places they'll be like, oh, you can make up to this much money, but it's like if you stay here for this amount of time, and if you don't yeah. quit, and if you do this, and if you do that, it's like, oh, I didn't know all these stipulations. You know, I didn't know I had to. I had to, you know, uh, you know, sign all this extra paperwork or this, whatever it is, like that. They you have to get up to that, that that paycheck that they say you'll get immediately. Yeah, you know? they 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 sell that bullshit. You know what they they did that in during COVID with Target, okay. where, where they said, uh, "We'll pay you twenty four dollars an hour starting," and then people on TikTok went into Target and they found out that's for people who stock overnight for four hours. So literally, you get twenty four dollars an hour, but you work four hours a week. Oh my god! So yeah, it, it was bullshit, and and it's also like high intense. You know, they say like in Amazon, people yeah, wearing yeah, fucking yeah. diapers because mm-hmm. they want to do shit full speed. Yeah. So like, so I just laughed. That's all I did, and I was like, dude, I'm just telling you because I wish somebody would have told me this. Yeah. That it's gonna be hard in the beginning, you know. So he gets all mad. He goes out into the Bay One area. I'm still in the office. And he tells all these other brats that I'm talking shit about UTI. Yeah. So I walk out there. And lit- this is word for word with this with this lower-ass tech. Basically, a peasant talking to a king because I'm a fucking manager. <laughs> he, I, I walk out there. And they're mocking how the general manager got his ass kicked. Like there's like this fucking bitch, he and he's like he's like acting it all out. It's all on camera. I got it all on camera. And I go out there. And I'm like, you know what's funny? How come none of you guys? And before I could finish, my, he goes, "How about you shut the fuck up? Because you ain't part of this fucking conversation, bitch." And I just looked at the other like AGM. I'm just like, and he's smiling. I'm like, hmm, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. And he finishes his bullshit, whatever. And I go. So back to what I was saying, you know, to you to your. It, it, to 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 the to your high presence here as a mechanic mm. at Jiffy, and he goes, "That's technician, bitch." Oh <laughs> come on! So they told me a UTI that I'd be called. Yeah, yeah. So I go. So what I want to know is, how come there's an old man getting his fucking ass kicked by a homeless person, and what are you guys doing? And he goes, "There was nobody fucking there, motherfucker." How about that? And I go, "Oh really?" Because um. I got three different camera shots of him getting his ass kicked. Yeah. So are are you taping a new spinoff of The Office here <laughs> called The Shop? You know, like, what what the fuck is happening? And then the redneck from Wisconsin, he's the one who was there, and he taped it. So he goes, man, Phil, fuck you. Shut the fuck up. Because he knew what I was getting at. Yeah. That you're a fucking pussy watching this old man get his ass kicked and not doing anything, not calling the police, nothing, you know? So he walks away. And then 
I'm like, what? What is your guy's problem? You got, you got, you guys call me a motherfucker like four times. Like, what? What is the deal here? Why are you so angry at me? And he's like, because I don't fucking understand how Jiffy Lube would hire somebody that doesn't know shit about cars to be a general manager. I'm like, because managers manage. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, they. This is what they do. They sit on their desk with a cigar and they watch you fucking peasants <laughs> do the hard work. That's what we do. Like, I'm like, bro, it, I'm not even supposed to be. In the shop. Right. So I just felt so bad for this man. Dude, this is what's so ridiculous. That manager was so like depressed and beaten down by these workers. Here's another thing that's kind of that, 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 like it's half funny, half fucked up that. So companies like 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 Jiffy Loop, they don't even care. They They are so micromanaging to the point where you can they don't care no longer if you make money for them. You need to make a percentage of each service. Okay. So, for example, like each month you have to do like 5% tire rotations. Bro, we were like 60% radiator flushes oh, because God. that was the only thing that they were willing to do. Yeah. And, it, and, and you know what that means? There's a shit ton of people who didn't need radiator flushes. Yeah, yeah. You know? So we're, ju- we're just screwing them over. But we're not screwing them over. It's because they don't want to fucking do anything. Yeah. And so... Anyways, so he, where, where the fuck was I? So he starts going that, you know, you're talking shit about UTI, that all you do is fucking talk shit. And I'm just like, I don't talk shit. I don't give a fuck about your school. I don't know shit about your school. And I'm not even swearing when I, like, I wasn't swearing like this. I'm just like, I just don't care about your school. I'm just saying, every time we do something, when I go to change the oil, you're telling me I'm holding something wrong. You're telling me I'm doing something wrong. We're trying, we, we, we're a business here. Yeah. We, we got to get in and out full speed. I don't, I don't need fucking you know like depressed zoomer 17 year old acting like he's my gordon ramsay of the oil shop you know he's acting like he's making four hundred thousand dollars trying to do this oil James yeah right now. and so like and and that's what i and, and and bro they're they're like on their phones while they're changing oil the one guy so you know what made me laugh my ass off there was one gangbanger that worked with us yeah he would fucking like tag his gang tag all over the fucking place. Like a legitimate gangbanger. Yeah. I called him Doodle Face. Doodle Face. He was Takashi 68. Oh, That's there you go. And he uh he here's what made me laugh my ass. You, you ever seen like hood movies like you seen like Menace to Society? No, I'm not a big movie guy. You know, oh, okay. I don't see a lot of movies. Or like Boys in the Hood? Never. I've only seen little bits and pieces of it. Well, well, well you know, you know in those movies like whenever someone's creeping with a gun they like hold it down yeah, and yeah, tiptoe yeah. Okay. as if that's gonna camouflage the gun, you right. know. This gangbanger, he they were telling him that he's gonna get fired because here's what's here, here's how great I'm telling you, I may be wild Phil, but bro, they literally told me I okay, these guys have been there for six months. Yeah. I already so so remember how I told you like each month you get a bonus, whatever, mm-hmm. and it's based on your reviews. They were there for six months. And they, if you go on Google, all one stars. No not kidding. only did they get a, not get good reviews, they, they got nothing but bad reviews. I was there for a month and I already reached my bonus. Right. Because I got seven awesome, they're like, they're literally people saying, thank God this guy Phil is there because I cannot stand the other people. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and literally I would just be, it's not even hard to be kind. It's just, hi, how are you? What are you looking to do today? It's customer service. Yeah. You're in a service industry. It's so just I, cars. And, and I would act like, oh, your name's Matt? Okay. Yeah. You're, and right after I'd be courteous, they'd be like, what are you, gay or something? I'm like, oh, <laughs> uh, this is how gay I am. I got a $20 tip. That's how gay I am. There you, know? you go. Yeah. So, um, back to, so, <laughs> this is fucking always, I got to be sucking on this stogie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to hear this. I'm, I'm not a big stogie guy myself. So, but I, I I get the I get the appeal of them, you know. It, it gets my uh, it gets my rush going, and your blood yeah. pressure up. Yeah, <laughs> it helps me. It helps me. It actually helps me. You're like write new material. Really? I, yeah. Yeah. I never I never really had like any like specific thing that helps me, you mm-hmm. know. But yeah, I, I could see it, you know. I the smoking something. It's like a pondering thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me sit. You know, hit this little this cigar here, and then think about things for. So I could I could see that how that could I could do that. But but anyways. Yeah. So um so the next I'm trying to think of what happened the next thing that happened is 
the the new hirees, these guys that haven't even get hired, they're just like, man, you just you you just a bitch ass who talks shit. I'm just like, I'm a bitch ass. He goes, yeah, you a bitch ass faggot. And then he called me the n word like seven times, and he didn't use the hard r. Otherwise, we would have been good friends, you know. <laughs> but um, so yeah, he, and then and then like here's the only other, like I only did two other things in professional. The one thing was he started doing that thing where you know like white woke chicks do where they slap their hand when they're talking oh yeah yep he started doing that and i was just <laughs> i was just like i wish i could do it here with this mic. i just started like you know i'm gonna listen to you more if you do this yeah yep you know so and, we're all thinking when and, they do that and he just he just like he he like walked away and punched a toolbox so then he comes back and they they started going into personal they're just like man i don't feel i can't even believe you got a family they they got to be ashamed of you working here and i'm just like uh, okay why is that he goes because i'm gonna be making because you're gonna be making that half a mil right <laughs> and, and he said hell yeah <laughs> i just started oh, laughing again man. and i go bro you know what you're going into personal stuff i i this is all i said and i don't even think this was out of, i just go i don't know how your mom raised you but you have zero respect zero respect like there's a hierarchy here you don't talk to managers like that right and once again, the the new hiree, the black dude, he's like, oh, man, if you talk about my mom, I'd fucking kill your ass. I'd fucking kill you right now. You better not be saying that shit to me. And and I almost want to be like, well, yeah, because you didn't, you didn't, I obviously didn't have a dad around. <laughs> like, but I didn't say that. Instead, when he said he was going to kill my ass, the other AGM, the guy who's too tired to rotate tires, yeah, he brings me into the office and he's like, he, well, well, he's like, yo, Phil, go to the office, man. You're fucking arguing with teenagers. I'm like, I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> I still got it. No, so he's like, no, go to go to the office, dude. Like, they're, they're gonna they're threatening to kill you. You, you dude, you, are are you trying to get hurt? You're like, your family needs the, just just calm down, man. So I start walking to the office. He goes, yeah, go in there, suck that motherfucker's dick, you fucking bitch ass faggot. All you do is suck dicks. You sucking Jiffy Lube's dick. Whoa. And I just stopped, and I'm just like, well, you know. Like you said, Jiffy Lube doesn't pay much, and your dad does, and he likes how I do it. Oh, so what do you want me to do? And so, and he like, he he like, it took him like ten minutes to retain what I just said. So then he just started punching his own car, and and just screaming, "I'm gonna kill your ass! I'm gonna kill your!" And and I thought he was gonna come back with a gun, yeah, because he's from. This is the guy that's from Indiana, you know. Like, yeah, he's got nothing to lose. He's in a different state. Yeah. After he said he's going to kill my ass, I told him, I'm like, you can fucking leave the premises, and you two brats can fucking clock out now. And they started laughing. They're just like, you're, you're not fucking in charge. You're not in charge. I'm like, I'm, I'm an assistant manager, bro. I, I kind of am. Yeah, yeah. I kind of am. And, and, and they didn't do it. So uh, I just, yeah, that whole fucking thing happened. They got fired instantly. But then, so so let's get to the... I don't even know how long I'm talking. About. I'm sorry. Dude. No, I was going to say the meat of it. So I see. It seems like there's a lot of meat to this story. Honestly. Well, well, that's so. That's the the first incident. So that okay. so they got fired, whatever. And there, the funny thing is, like they kept the whole argument. They kept saying they're like, "Man, you think I need Jiffy Lube? You, your fucking bitch ass, gonna be here years from now with your family ashamed of you, while I'm working at a Porsche dealership." Yep. yep. And I'm just like, so, dude. What's keeping you here? Right. Those two those two UTI brats, they were going to quit in 4 days. So I'm like, dude, like what's if you're going to make just do the math. Do the math. If you're going to make a half a million dollars a year from now, why are you staying here for 4 more days? Right. Why don't you just fucking leave now? Cuz you're about to get fired. Yeah. And the other guys are just like, "Man, I got four other places to go." I go, "Congratulations, go." Yeah. Cuz you're not getting hired here, bro. Mm-hmm. So and these these fucking dorks, they call in the next day after they get fired. They go, "I'm still going to orientation to go to a different location," and and I'm just like, "Cause you got your edge location from me from fucking UT." Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I don't know what all this talk is about. Like they're gonna make shit tons of money, but they're fighting for their Jiffy Loop job. Yeah. So they banned them. Two days go by. So they all got fired. Four four guys. Now the only one that's left is Doodleface, the gangbanger. Yep. He comes in first thing. 
goes, yo, man, yo, Phil, you know, can I talk about, I can't talk about you. Yo, yo, and he called me an word. He's like, yeah, you're going to get, you, you firing everybody here, man. You, you, you that kind of N-word. And I'm just like, bro, just don't fuck with me and it'll be fine. So he's like, all right, all right. Well, guys, I just got, I just got re-upped. I got five new fucking bottles of Xanax for my psychiatrist. So, yeah, I'm going to go get a cheeseburger. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So he goes, pops five Xanax, comes back. Falls asleep in the corner of the fucking room for two hours on that Xanax. And then I'm like walking by him and he, he's like, you know, he's high. So he yeah. blow, he takes an air hose, blows it directly into my ear. I almost fucking hit him with a torque wrench because. Don't feel good. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I listen to fucking music. I mix music. Like I went deaf for four hours. So like. I, I went off on him. They fired him instantly. He tried he tried to fight. He's like, man, you fucking sensitive. He he got so mad too because like that's that's the thing is like when people get confrontational, I just kill them with kindness, you yeah. know. So he's just like, yo, man, what are you what are you a female? And he's talking to the gym. He's like, I can't be working with fucking females. And he rips his shirt off. He goes, let's go outside and settle this like men. And the the manager's like he's like you just fucking threaten him get the fuck out of my shop luckily, yeah. luckily he was there that day he's like i didn't threaten him he was what did you just say he goes let's settle it like man he's like yeah let's talk it outside like man and i go but but takashi 68 i'm a female so you, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna take me out on the town yeah is that how we're gonna sell it i can't i we can't settle it like man so you want me to tuck it in you know so <laughs> so they fire his ass anyways so the end of this story is basically what happened is HR said, this is exactly what they told me. They said that I was supposed to, here, here's what I was supposed to do. When they started talking shit to my face, I was supposed to tell them to get off the premises, which I did. Have them clock out, which I did. Well, well they didn't want to clock out. And then if that didn't work, lock myself in a bathroom and call the police. No. Lock, call 911. I didn't do that because... To be honest, they were blocking the phone, and you got four, you know, hood rats around you with wrenches. Like, I can't reach the fucking. Well, they're younger, so they're hood mice. But, <laughs> but like, yeah. So, 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 so they fired me for. They said they said by me talking because because after this whole thing happened, I kind of talked to that guy. I'm just like, dude, why? I I just want to know why do you have so much hate towards me? Like, ever since I started working here, and he kept saying, he's like, because they hired somebody who don't know shit about cars. I'm like, so go to corporate about that. Yeah. Like, you don't have to fucking hate me. They did that. And I'm actually, according to the stats, I'm doing a good job here. Yeah. So what I found out at the end of it, and this is the, this is the sh- sh- end of it, is that basically what I found out is they consider me a liability because if they did beat me up i would be able to sue them because i kept screaming at the hr i'm just like bro like you basically took their side when they've been doing all this bullshit right so 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 at the end of the day i think i told you earlier if i had to point a finger of blame the thing that sucks is the the manager in a sling he's the kindest fucking manager i ever had he's the nicest fucking guy but he's like that dude. You ever see like those dads that they're surrounded by ten kids and they're throwing fucking plates and breaking shit? That's who he was. Just letting it go, yeah. And because he didn't write them up, there's no history of them falling asleep on Xanax, right. showing up to work in Jordans, you know. Yeah. So it's fucking it's sad because I had that fucking place running. I could I could have it could have just been me and that manager, and we would have run that place on our own. Yeah. But that's what happened. So Everybody out there, find that Jiffy Lube. Find it on Yelp. Give it the worst reviews you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Find Takashi 68 if he's still there. And uh, hire a homeless guy to go beat the shit out of that manager again. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll be all good. Yeah, yeah. It's a Lombard one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, so. not to name any names, but Lombard uh, Jiffy Lube. Yeah, Just there's plenty there. of Lombards. You know? well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just in case you know which one we're talking about. If you know any... Homeless people are in the area. Just uh, send them over that way and see if they can deal with it like that. That yeah. guy, that guy's like living in like a that's like a like a decorated veteran of Jiffy Lube. You know, yeah, they should dude. have like distinguished like honor. I honor felt I felt like I was stuff. in dangerous minds, like <laughs> Michelle fight. You know, yeah, like I'm yeah. gonna fucking, you know, I should have pulled out a chair yeah. backwards and yep. be like, why do you hate me so much? Right. Let me teach you some Southern 
They're Manners, all in, you know? it's like a war zone out there. I, I I've gotten my oil change at, at, at Jiffy Lube before, and like it's, it's it's whatever, you know. But I didn't know it was like a like a a gang, you know, like a warfare type yeah. zone over there, you know. Well, the thing is, like, what I found out is two things that I, so so to be honest, out of all the corporate places, I found out all the little secrets, whatever. Jiffy Lube is probably the best bang for your buck, okay, compared to like Goodyear and whatever. But the funny they they taught us an orientation. You know you know who the biggest biggest competitor is? Who's that? Ma and Pa Shops. Okay. Because yeah. because uh Ma and Pa Shops, you know, like you know, like during COVID when when all that shit slowed down. Yeah. They they literally had such little business where they would literally just charge you what they paid for the oil. Just because, to stay afloat. Pretty ju- just much. to pay the rent. Yeah. 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 So and so like I guess I guess to put it into numbers. The to pay, to get a full synthetic oil change for my car at Jiffy Lube would cost one hundred twenty dollars. If I did it on my own, it would cost like forty. Yeah, just to let you know, like, because some people don't like to change their own shit. Yeah, you know, I learned how like in high school, I took an autos class, and then I just, you know, data dumped all that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like what's tough for like doing your own is like you have to have like an oil bin and somewhere to somewhere to get rid of it and stuff like that. Yeah. A car jack and stuff. You don't want the car to fall out and smash your face and everything. Yeah. So. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I have all that stuff. We have it at work that I could just use, but I'm just a lazy asshole. Yeah. You know, so I just take it to Jiffy Lube and let, a, you know, some I'll, crazy I'll, person. I'll, one day I'll come in and I'll change all your guys' oil. There you go. Pay me cash. Easy. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a like a under the table type thing. It could be your new, a traveling oil changesman right there. But you know, if I fall asleep on Xanax underneath the car, that professional training from Jiffy Lube is yeah. rubbing off on yeah. me. You know? I mean, if you work hard enough, you could possibly make $400,000 changing oil <laughs> in people's cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Just travel around. You just got to work hard, you know? Mm-hmm. Man, Jiffy Lube. It's, yeah, that's, it's one of those things, you know, you just never think like uh, so much crazy stuff can be going on in some kind of workplace. But there, there's crazy people in any job. You know, whether you're yeah. working at Jiffy Lube or if you're in the, the NFL, you're going to work with crazy fucking people. Yeah, you know? yeah. The, the reason why they specifically like that company has so many they don't do background checks or drug testing none at all huh? none at all wow because when because like after all this shit happened i just looked up these people just on google yeah immediately they got mug shots no so, shit so i'm just like how the fuck what are you guys doing you, yeah you guys you guys are a little bit more than desperate you know but um but yeah if, if i if i had to tell like the general public like what to watch out for the whole the whole paranoia of whether they change your oil that that is a uh, Alex Jones level paranoia. Yeah, I, n- I never even considered that. I didn't know that was even a thing. People thought they're just not changing the oil. Yeah, yeah. Well, huh. well, well. What happened is, um, in like 2010. Yeah. I remember this video. I don't know if you ever seen it. it. I remember it was like a yellow logo. I think it was. So the funny thing is, I think it was Pennzoil. Okay. And that's why you don't see any Pennzoils around. Because after that video, it fucked them over. But the funny thing is, Pennzoil owns Jiffy Lube. So they just huh. changed their name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happened is uh, there was a YouTuber in like 2010. He uh, spent like 10 grand on like GoPro cameras. Yeah. And he dropped off his car at a Pennzoil. He had like $2,000 worth of work that needed to be done. They just didn't touch it and charged him. No shit. So uh, that's yeah. that's fun to come back and be like, how how'd you do that? Like, oh, yeah, they go through the whole thing. It's like, actually, you didn't yeah. do anything, you know? Yeah. Wow. But the, but the oil thing specifically, what I found out is like, so- Penn's oil and Jiffy Lube are owned by Shell, so okay. oil is fucking peanuts to them. Yeah. And what I found out in orientation is like, you can actually like, it's funny because like, you know, if you go to a mom and pa shop, you just drop your car off. You don't know what they do. Yeah. But in all these like corporate places, they got that window so mm-hmm. you can watch them. Yep. What they do, like for example, this actually happened to me. You're. Like according to Jiffy Lube rules, you're supposed to have a four man team working on this. One day, Doodle Face didn't show up. The other the other brats went on lunch, yep. so I'm the only one there. And a car came in. I did the entire car, like the sail, the t- the upper bay, the lower bay, in under five minutes. And the 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 customer's like, "You didn't change my oil." I'm like, "Yeah, I did. I just do it quick." And he's like, "Really?" It's like, so 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 the rule is. Oil is so fucking cheap, you can technically do it twenty five times before they lose profit. Wow! So that's so what I'm saying is like that's that's an unwise paranoia because what I'm saying is it actually is more work. Like you, it's easier to just do it right the first time, yeah, than 
fuck it up and there's a line of five people. Yeah. So so there's no way someone's going to fuck. But the thing that I do tell people that you got to watch out for, they just, my shop, they threw out everybody's skid plate. You know what a skid plate is? It's what goes underneath the oil pan and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So instead of an undercoat, like, you just got a plate there that so it doesn't rust. Yeah. They just take it off, throw it out, and then you leave without your skid plate. Huh. Actually, what they did to my car, which is which I thought was fucking crazy, I I went in there. This is like three years ago. I knew that they did that. Yeah. So I was like, my skid, you're not, you're gonna put my skid plate back, right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, it'll, we're not even, yeah, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You know what they fucking did? So like, you ever see, you know what a cutting wheel is? Mm-hmm. It's like um, the closest thing I could think of is like when they get, do open heart surgery, they have yeah. to saw your rib cage open. Okay. So it's kind of like a sideways grinder. Right. They fucking cut a hole in my skid plate, kind of like a doggy door. Yeah. And that's what they did. That no, just like that, huh? So they're like, yeah, we didn't take it off. Yeah. We just fucking wrecked it. You know, like, I, we didn't lie. We said we were gonna take it off. Yeah. We, it's back there. It's. <laughs> It's where we left it. It's just not how we left it, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm going to Karen it up next time I go to a Jiffy Lube. Like, I know for a fact that you guys are making 25 times profit, so there's no way this should cost as much as this. I'm going to fucking Karen it up the next time I go there. Well, you could it. actually, um, you could come in with your own oil. And they'll, really? And they'll just fucking, yeah. your own oil, your own fill. Because we had a guy come in, um, I don't know what the name of the car is, but it literally looks like, you know, Mr. Bean? Yeah. It looks like Mr. Bean's car, but it's a convertible. Yeah. This this rich yuppie guy, he had a car shipped in from England. So literally the steering wheel was on the right side. Okay. And he came in. He's like, nobody wants to do this fucking car because it, it's not even in our system because it's a British car. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, he brought his his own shit in and he paid us cash. So no good. That's the other thing too. You know what that doodle face guy would do? What's that? He'd, he'd fucking... So it's called CSA, which is the guy that greets you, customer service. Okay. He would greet the guy. He'd be like, "Oh, hey, how's it going? I'm just letting you know all the all the all the you know coupons we have and all that stuff, and um, yeah, we'll take care of your car right away." Then he goes, takes his Xanax, falls asleep in the bathroom. I do the entire car, and then he comes back. He goes, "Yeah, by the way, my name's Alex. Oh, so come if, on. Uh, if you take a survey, just mention my name." That's brutal. Yeah, Ugh. and that's and like. And like that's the thing is that because this GM didn't have a spine, I looked like an asshole being there a week in telling these motherfuckers, "You're fired, you're fired, you're fired." You know? Yeah. So it's you're just, cleaning up shop over there, and there mm-hmm. he's like, "Those are the the best workers I've ever had." Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wonder if he's ever had it worse than than it was when you saw it. And he's like, "Things are finally finally turning around." And you're like, "This is fucking terrible, dude." It was it was so sad. I've I've never I've gotten fired two other times in my life. Yeah. And all, all, like I can even tell you that it, it it was never intentionally my fault, but that was the worst time I ever felt feeling like losing a job because yeah. I was I was like, dude, I'm turning this place around. The the guy, the guy that got me the job in Rolling Meadows, he's like that location used to get a hundred cars a day. Really, and our quota there was fourteen <sighs> because of how shitty that fucking area is. Yeah. So, but the other thing, see, I didn't really talk about this because. This this just gets controversial. The other thing that pissed me off. So you know the guys, you know the 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 peasants as I call the lower bay guys, they're not supposed to make any sales. Okay. But you know what they did? I'm not even joking. Any time a white person came in, they told them everything is wrong. Transmission's wrong. Radiator fluid's wrong. Upsell everything. Really. Any time Hispanic guy came in or black military discount and they don't they don't they're not even military oh shit it's fucking crazy huh so wow now and i'm like you're not even supposed to be doing the sales right let alone you're telling me give him a military discount he can't even speak english oh man like hey they earned it all right well they're veterans of getting through that jiffy loop funny thing is the guy those uti guys that stay there they save their Google passwords, man. So they're going to be signing up on all the grinders. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Getting lots of messages, emails, and everything. Yeah. Holy cow. But uh, so that's that's my bullshit. That, um, the only other, I mean, I got a few things. Um, I mean, we could just start with the interview. I was just going to say, so you're Matt Mihalski. Matt Mihalski. What, what, uh, wh- where did you grow up? Uh, East Dundee. It's a suburb, you know, not too far from here. It's like the very edge of of the suburbs of Chicago. So like if you go 10 minutes further west, you know, you're in a cornfield 
if you go 10 minutes further east, you're in a town of 100,000, you know, so it's a yeah. very, very edge, small town what's, feel. What's the town next to it? West Dundee. But. Okay. But if you go, if you go further out, you get to like Huntley, Hampshire, like real. Okay. Okay. Rural. They're kind of getting bigger now, but really rural, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. when I was growing up. So, um. You know what? Oh yeah. That's, I always get Dundee mixed up with, um, Gurney. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gurney. Is, yeah. That's way out there. But yeah, Dundee's like just north of Elgin pretty much. Okay. Spread along 31 yeah, yeah, yeah. that runs up there to Wisconsin. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought I thought you you basically drove east then. Yeah, essentially. Th- so, uh, but um, so you grew up there, and like, what made you want to? You know, I know you were. You said you're a marine. Yeah, I was in the Marine Corps four years right after high school, um, which fucking sucked. Uh, that was just. Uh, you know, it's it's it sucks. You were, you were in it when you were in high school. No, right, no, no. Right, right after high school, and like, you know, you go through and and this and that, and it's it's just not. It's just a shitty job, is is what the military is for the most part. Like, there's obviously been times where there's like, you know, there's guys who were in, you know, that were actually in combat and stuff like that, and that's a whole separate thing. But I was in the military during like mostly peacetime. Yeah, which means that you just have a shitty job that's run by the government. Yeah. So it's it's like, tough. Like, did you have any active duty? I was active duty for the whole four years. I was I was a radio operator, but I got stationed at like a hospital at one point. Yeah, like I was supposed you, to be. I was supposed to be a radio. Anybody? No, didn't kill anybody. Oh. Uh, no, never <laughs> did. Can't say I did. Uh, I killed my self esteem and my spirit, but that's about it. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I was in. Um, I, I was I was a radio operator, so I was supposed to be like. I, I got told by the recruiter, like a radio operator. It's like in the movies, like the war movies and stuff like that. Same Private Ryan. It's the guy with the big antenna yeah. who gets killed every time. That's did, the radio operator, and did, I was like, did, that seems like a good job for me. You know? Do, do they still have those? They have. Oh yeah, they they have these huge antennas that that come off your back. Really? And stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that seems like some 1900s technology. We like. we had radio. So okay, so the thing about the Marine Corps is that it's the bastard child of of the U.S. military, right? Yeah. It gets it. It has nothing. Nothing good about it. so like everything that the Marine Corps has is the is the old shit that the army just got rid of. Oh, they just shit. pass it down. We still had things to connect to our radios that you do fucking um, tell like the telegraphs, like the Morse code. Yeah, yeah, Morse code, Morse code. We still had. Oh those. my god, it was dude. all broken. Our radios sucked so bad that a troubleshooting step, a legitimate troubleshooting step for the radios, if it wasn't working, was to drop it on the ground. It was called the drop test. Drop it on the ground and see if the wires realign and and, and make it work. And it that's works sometimes. So yeah, that's the, crazy. The technology wasn't good. It sucked. We we would use these like satellite antennas, where you have to like manually point it at a satellite. It's like it's like if you had to point your phone at the fucking satellite for it to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're the the antennas are about the height of your waist. So did you so did you lose like frequency if you were like in a like a tunnel like concrete over you? Uh. No, so so I was I was part of a, a communications company, so I wasn't actually like with any infantry platoons. We were the ones that were like at like the base, if you will, like setting up the communications. So, so those so, guys. So it's almost could like use a it. truck dispatch. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Okay. but you're just dispatching people. Yeah. Um, and so we would just set up the communications there. So we were we had these big antennas. You'd set up. We we got to do some cool stuff. You get kind of creative with it, but um, if it didn't work, if a radio wasn't working what would happen is officers who don't it's kind of like the managers they don't really know what's going on but they're in charge of us you know yeah they would come over and they're like hey why is why is this radio not working and we would try to come up with the dumbest reason that they would still believe yeah yeah. so they're like hey uh we need this radio up why is it not working we're like the moon i don't know like the moon is just fucking with the radio and they're like i didn't know it could do that we're like yeah the moon (laughs) fucks with the radios and they would believe it um but yeah, it didn't work most of the time. Sometimes we got it to work. Yeah, you know we're in metro, uh, Mercury retrograde. Yeah, we're we're me- re- yeah Mercury's in retrograde. The the uh, astronomy, astro- it's all astrology is all fucking with the radios. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Um, so yeah, radios didn't work very well. Um, we had these satellite antennas that pointed right at your balls. You just feel the radiation just going right into you, which is really cool. Um, so you could have a kid that looks like mike wazowski yeah I, exactly that yeah or just the fact that it's gonna be stupid just like me maybe it's just gonna keep <laughs> passing that down but um yeah so radio operator i got stationed at like a hospital at one point yeah which fucking sucked i was like humping a desk for for like a year yeah i thought i was gonna be doing like cool like war shit like you know, oh i call of duty this and that and then they're like here's your cubicle yeah and i was like oh god dude it was that was brutal but you, you know you know what's a cool thing that i learned recently that uh did you listen to? You said you listened to a lot of music. Have you ever heard of the band Dope? I, don't, I can't say I have. No. So they were they were like this band in that whole new metal like Corn, Limp Bizkit, okay. Coal Chamber, 
and this band Dope, um, they uh, they they're j- they're just an average fucking metal band, but they they never really got big. Like it, it's it's kind of it's fucking weird. It's like they were known internationally but they were at the bottom the guy at the bottom of the totem pole you know okay, yeah but what happened is i guess there was some i didn't even know about this until i read about it on wikipedia but there was some controversy where there was some marine that was that was like a huge fan and he became like i, I don't know the ranks but the guy who like you know when you storm a village the guy who's calling all the shots okay. what is that like a sergeant uh, yeah, it depends on what you're doing, but yeah, it could be a sergeant, yeah. And and so what he did was because you know, there's going to be a percentage of civilians that you kill when you do something like that, he would put a dope song on everyone's headphones. No shit. And the song is Die motherfucker die motherfucker die. Oh man. That's the chorus. And so that would he he felt like that would desensitize, like just mowing everyone down. Yeah. And so they interviewed the singer. They're just like, "How do you like?" I guess it's like a well-known fact because I knew some. I knew some Marines who remember that that they, they would play that song, and they're like, "How do you feel that there's people killing civilians through your song?" And he's like, "Well, we got fans. Pretty, <laughs> like, pretty metal, dude. If you ask me, you know." Yeah. You know what's what's crazy is that. Uh, so I worked with uh, some machine gunners, uh, uh, just some infantry guys and stuff like that. We trained on their machine guns and everything. And I can't imagine that this when had you, to do with when, that. When you say machine gunners, is it like the fifty cal? Yeah, like, so uh, foxhole thing. It's it's a it's a sub it's like a subset of an infantryman, mm-hmm. um, but they shoot. Yeah, the fifty cal is one of them. There's like the M two forty or the M two forty Bravo is another machine gun. Yeah, they have like a belt fed grenade launcher, the Mark nineteen, I think it's called. Holy that shit! They shoot that thing sucks. It just jams up all the time. Shoots does and everything. But they're, that's they're 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 the infantrymen who specialize in machine guns essentially. Yeah. Uh, so we worked with some of them. We learned some more about their equipment and everything. And uh, th- and this is also a thing that they teach every Marine. Uh, it's a, a part of like basic training and stuff like that. Um, it's all about. There's a lot of ditties, things to like say to remember. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Like it's like the what is it called? Like when tr- uh, truckers have like trucker lingo. Yeah. Right? Essentially, yeah. So like little things, like like make sure you remember things. When you're shooting these machine guns, there's a, there's a certain burst where you're supposed to shoot for, I don't know, like three to five seconds, right? Yeah. So the ditty for that, when you're shooting this gun, instead of counting to three or to five, they tell you to pull the trigger and they they make you scream, die, motherfucker, die, release. Oh, shit. That's got to be that. I wonder if it is. I had never heard of that story before, but they say, and and then if you have to shoot longer, they say to go, die, motherfucker, die, 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 release. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's what they say. I don't know if it's the same thing from that, metal. that's what they teach you. Yeah, you know, it, it, I I think it's the Polish in me because uh, growing up in a Polish family, they love making fun of fat people. Okay. I know because I got the brunt of it, but <laughs> but um, I that's the reason why I always thought Marines were higher above Army, just because I felt like every Marine I knew was way more in. Like like you'd see a guy that looks like Chris Farley, and he's like, oh yeah, I was in the Army, but right. all Marines are always in shape. Yeah, and you know? there, there's another part of it too in that like. You know, they, there's a saying they say like every marine is a rifleman, um, and that's because every marine when they, you know, every every army, marine corps, and navy, they all go through boot camp, basic training, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But the marine corps is the only one that sends everybody, no matter what your job is, to a secondary combat training. Okay. So whether you're an infantryman, whether you're a radio operator, an accountant, you're still going to get some level. There was actually a story in in Fallujah. Uh, there were there was this the big base where like like everything was like they had like TVs and fucking you know concerts and shit like that. Yeah, a section of that base got attacked and it was an air wing. So these are all fucking mechanics. This is fucking Doodle Face and you know yeah. Takashi Six Eight sitting there working on on planes. Yeah, and these were all Marines, so they were all trained in the, your basic combat skills, and they repelled an attack. A bunch of mechanics. Imagine if your Jiffy Lube got. Attacked by ISIS and they repelled the attack. That's what happened out there. Oh wow! Because they're they're trained to at least a basic extent. Yeah, I had a I have a friend who he's fucking badass. He's a I I think he's in he works in like Homeland Security. He he doesn't like talking about it because of that because because I think he does all he does now is like CIA. It's pretty much like the Snowden monitoring type shit. Okay, now. yeah. Uh, but he used to be a paratrooper and he was stationed in like I think Fort Knox. Okay. So I don't know. Is that that's like the kind of base you're talking about? Like that's 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 an army that's an army base in Tennessee. 
Yeah. 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 But yeah. when you're saying like a bass got attacked, you mean like that's like that's yeah. like a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I uh I don't know if I ever told you. You know, um, I was in ROTC. Okay. And I was in uh, I I, I basically milked the government because what i did was is uh my mom made me go to she changed uh, one day i just showed up i came home and she fucking my mom was a horrible person to me like she was in love with this new boyfriend that was a fucking asshole we used to fight all the time and uh she was like she changed all the locks and threw my shit on on the lawn and she's like you can either go to college or you're you're gonna be homeless wow and i was like well how the fuck am i gonna go to college she's like you better find out a way and I didn't want to take out any loans, so and I've been I've had sleep epilepsy since I was sixteen. Okay. So I signed up for ROTC because what they did they they paid for your first two years, but then you get shipped uh, immediately to Afghanistan. Oh wow! So I just signed up, and I'm like, they never mentioned epilepsy uh, epilepsy on here. So after two years, I'm like, yeah, guys, I'm epileptic. So honorable. Oh discharge. man, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, that's that's quite a that's quite a scheme right there, but the fact that they scam pretty much everybody else into doing it that the fact you got out is actually pretty pretty good it's yeah, impressive. yeah i just remember it was funny because um you know i had to go through the whole ceremony where you you wear the uniform and stuff yeah, yeah, and yeah. i just remember like the the sergeant at arms the guy who like you know they put the sword on you and they yeah like whatever knight you I, whatever I the what army does i don't know what the fuck they're, yeah. they're doing over there he uh i just remember he looked exactly like mr bean really it made me laugh like, oh that's hard not to laugh at yeah oh but um so so yeah so you you, you want to i'm just curious like because i always i'm always under the impression that people who go to marines or the army oftentimes you know they're people like who either they're from like a poor household or they don't really like they don't know how to like establish their life past that because they don't have money for college or something you right. know so i'm just curious like what made you like i like i i my my uh, they're pretty much family to me they're my my wife's best friend her entire family they, there's like s- six polish people in there they all went into the national guard all because they didn't have money and now they got you know there's like the what is it called you get like a higher loan if you're a military for yeah house. something like that oh yeah the va home loan they call it yeah so so i'm just curious like what made you want to do marines like so i kind of got i kind of got played a little bit um i was in i was a senior in high school um, actually you mind if i get one of those beers yeah absolutely dude um so i was a senior in high school mm-hmm. and uh i i was we had i was playing i've been playing football and stuff like that we had just finished my senior year of football my cousin who was a year older than me he had just uh dropped out of school and he was joining the marine corps mm-hmm. so me and my other cousin were both at two different high schools as seniors we both just finished playing football yeah my our older cousin says hey if you guys want to come work out with me we're going to do a workout at the the marine corps recruiting center we're like oh yeah you know i like getting a good workout in yeah no big deal so we go and we meet up with these guys and they're outside the recruiting office they're doing workouts and stuff and then one of the recruiters is like hey let me let me talk to you guys for a second (laughs) oh yeah pulls us into the office he's like he's like oh so you guys play football i hear we're like yeah yeah he's like you guys like being part of a team we're like yeah i love being part of a team they're like how about being part of a new team? We're like, dude, that sounds fucking awesome. How about challenging yourself? We're all like, about, still like, jo- I'm part of the Bloods. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> is this like a gang initiation, dude? They're like, they're, they're they, and dude, the recruiters, man, they they know how to sell stuff. And you're 18. It's the same reason. It's the same thing when people sign up for like student loans for you know, yeah, a hundred thousand dollars. They have no idea what they're doing. You know, you know, we're just 18 year old people who are like, dude, yeah, I I do want to be part of this. I do want to. And they, they really just sell it to you. They, they have this thing where they, they put these cards out on a table that all say, like, integrity, you know, teamwork and, and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. service. You're like, what matters to you? And you're like, this, this, and that. And they just hone in on those things. They get you. They, None of they, this. They know what they're doing, man. They, <laughs> and they get you. So it was really just kind of like I, I – It is kind of sad because that's how they manipulate. Yeah, you know. yeah. And, you know, for some people it can be a good thing because, you know, some people think like, oh, they're sending these guys off to war. It's true for some people, but some people go into the military and they're, you know, they're a cook for for four years, yeah, you know, yeah. and then they get out and they learn how to manage a restaurant. So yeah, it can be good for some people, and you know, it's steady income, it's a stable job, mm-hmm. you know, for for some people, you know, and they're always like, oh, they they target the the less fortunate and this and that. It's like, well, yeah, they they do, but for some people, it can work out in a nice way. Yeah, yeah, the half honestly. glass full of it is. They're providing you an opportunity yeah. that you might have never have gotten. Exactly, you know? yeah. And it but it does suck. It's a shitty job. But um yeah, so they, they kinda sold us on that. 
and um you know and they they bring you into this environment you're all working out together you're part of a team and you really feel it you know yeah i was super motivated about it at one point i was all about it yeah you know and then you know give me a, a year in i'm like dude this fucking sucks man this is <laughs> shitty dude this is all a lie man how, so how, how long had like did they make you serve is it uh so you every contract is eight years um and so most people do four years active and then four years inactive mm-hmm. uh so the inactive is like has nothing you're not even affiliated with the military at all yeah it's just that if something happens they can call you back in yeah so i the whole four i'm done with my whole contract but for the whole four years of inactive fucking china's fucking with taiwan yeah ukraine's getting invaded i'm like dude i'm getting called back man fuck i'm going back out there so fuck yeah so do you have any more years you got to do i'm I'm all done i did my four years i got out in 2019 and then my last four years of inactive finished up recently. Nice. The, those those last four years of inactive, they send you an email every now and again, and they're like, "Hey, you have to show up to this." They call them musters. Mm-hmm. They're like, "You have to show up to this thing, and and like update your information. You have to like yeah. drive to Milwaukee, like pay you two hundred bucks." Mm-hmm. And I would just email and be like, "I have to work. Sorry, can't yeah. go." And they would just they would just believe me. So, yeah, you know, like I it, it it's it sucks because. I've always had an unbiased opinion on everything. Like, that's kind of like, you know, I'm into Taoism. That's what this yin and yang, these tattoos, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've always, like, I never fucking, because everything these days, it's like, what team are you for? Are right. you red? Are you blue? Are you whatever? And a lot of people shit on, you know, all the, like, they have their, you know, if you like cops, you're red. If you if you like Marines, you're red, you know? Right. And the thing is, you know what, you know what I think sucks is, like, the bad cops fuck up the cops reputation yeah and i think there's a lot of marines or even veterans who like they're just really jaded but yeah then there's people time. like you or even like you know charlie born yeah yeah great guy who you guys are you got your shit together yeah you got it you got a family you know you don't like it's 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 unfortunate that like there's these people who are just like you need to like immediate like oh, it's funny when i called hr with this jiffy loop thing it's like yeah you, nothing you're gonna say is gonna offend me i'm a fucking marine <laughs> and i'm just like and you're and you're working for Jiffy Lube yeah, now, yeah, know? right. Like, did you get like so? But um, yeah, some people have a really hard time separating from that, and they get so jaded from the 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 shittiness of the military that they're like, "Fuck all these people! They don't know what I've been through." In reality, you just went through a shitty job that you couldn't get out of for four years. For the most part, there's there's people who are you know obviously much much worse scenarios than myself, and and you know mm-hmm. you know seen terrible things and all that stuff, but. That's that's part of what's tough about of getting back into regular society is just accepting the fact that you're just a regular, you you always were a regular person, yeah. And now you're you you're even more of just a regular person, yeah. You know, I remember one time I think I the f- one of the first three times I met Lori, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I pissed her off because, uh, you know, when when you're when you're getting ready to go on stage, you're kind of in that comedian mode, yeah. And something happened. I'm not, I'm not going to say names, but I'm pretty sure you know who. Uh, he says all these jokes about how much he hates white people. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And he went up there and he did some shit about Marines. And a Marine went off on them. And uh, I was like in comedy mode. So Lori's like, hey, you don't understand what people go through. I'm like, why do you, why, are, are, do you have, like, were you a Marine? She's like, no, my, you know what happened to my son? He was stationed at a U.S. base in Iraq where he, he was just guarding it. So he was kind of like, you, you see those poofy hat english guards yeah 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 but it, but she said that he had to watch where there was a muslim woman who she slept with somebody else's husband or she like took her burqa off or something or hijab and he stood there guarding and he had to watch the whole village stone her for four hours Oof. it took four hours to kill her and i'm just like man thought that afghan shit is good it took four hours for her to get stoned you know? Ooh. and she just yeah <laughs> yeah but, yeah but um but yeah no that the people don't understand i always tell people if you fuck it whatever you hate on try and do it you know what yeah, i mean it's true if you yeah. hate on if you whatever you hate on cops you hate on marines try and be one and then tell me you know yeah and you know i, I can see how people can get be, be put off by the guys who were all like you don't fuck you know die motherfucker die you do, yeah die motherfucker die like they they you know they i can see how people can get you know put off by that and there's some that don't make there's some veterans that don't make it easy because they, it, they, it becomes like their personality it's like yeah. it's like any other karen or yeah, or yeah astrology person it's like they just it turns into their whole thing even i get annoyed by some of those guys but like i don't know it's it's one of those things where it's like you kind of just like any political anything if you just look past like it's just a person it's yeah like yeah just a person you know yeah and it's funny because like i uh 
I used I, I make a bunch of like parody. You know, I was showing you the clothes. Yeah, and the, even I used to make like goofy bumper stickers. Yeah, and and what I thought about that was funny because I was kind of raised in an immigrant household. Is like places like Ukraine, Israel, even in places in Europe, some people you have to serve in the yeah, military. Yeah. And so I kind of thought it was funny how you get those guys who are all gung ho and it's their personality. They get the, you know, proud veteran. Yeah. And it's like, if you're an immigrant, you, you need to get like content, content to be forced to do this <laughs> for my country. You know? forced, forced veteran. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, so you, so, so yeah, you did the Marine and then like when you got out, like, did you go to school? What, what was yeah, post so, Marine life? So I got out, uh, and I had, a. So by the time I was close to getting out, I was like three and a half years in. I was so done with like being in the military. Like it all sucked. I was in Okinawa. I was, you know, so far away from everybody I ever knew. So, you know, it's like, it's, it's depressing. So I was, I was pretty bummed out. You start kind of like, like quiet quitting, you know, like yeah. you're just kind of being like a, like a slacker pretty much. Mm. And, uh, so I got out and I'm still stuck in this mentality of like, man, like, like this sucks. Like I don't want to do anything. So I, I uh, got out and I still had a, a, a few more months of being on the government like pay paycheck for a little bit yeah so i was just kind of like hanging out and i started just taking uh emt classes at at lg community college yeah so because I, I figured out i was before i went on, a, on onto a deployment i um i took uh combat lifesaver mm. which is just like trauma care and stuff like that yeah. it's more advanced like like trauma care that that we learned and it was the first thing that i learned that i was like oh like i'm actually kind of like enjoying this like i enjoy learning and i'm retaining it so that's where i kind of got the idea to be a paramedic came mm -hmm. from because i knew i i knew some people that were firefighters out here so i started taking e, uh, emt classes and then actually i started i took uh, a stand-up class at the lol theater in schaumburg oh nice and uh yeah, I, I went to the first class. How long ago was that? Do they do they still do that? I don't know if they still do it, but it was in 2019. Okay. I don't know if it was like a one-off thing. Maybe COVID canceled it or something like that. But I was uh, I was taking that class, and the first week I took that class, like it was all right, and then I failed my first EMT test. Oh shit! And I was like, I guess I got to make a decision here. Like, I guess I got to. <laughs> I was like, I got to choose one path or the other. So I, I stopped going to the standard class. I just ghosted this fucking class. And uh, then, you know, from there, I, I finished EMT. Uh, I went to the fire academy. I started working in the, in the fire department. But I, I didn't start stand-up again until 2022. So okay. I, I really wanted to, uh, you know, for a long time when I was in the military, but I couldn't. Yeah. And then I got out. I did one class, never did it again. And then it wasn't for another couple of years that I actually started doing stand-up. So. Did, did you ever have, like, where I've heard, like, have you ever seen that video where, like, Jeff Ross roasts Marines? I've seen that. Yeah. We, we never had that. When I was in Okinawa, we had uh, one – I went to one concert. They put, like, this county fair style thing on in Okinawa, which was pretty cool because they had, like, you know, like, uh, you know, cornbread or, you know, like, uh, what, what, like funnel cake stuff like this stuff. Like, yeah. like, it feels like you're back home, you know, yeah. which was cool. And then they had a concert, and Randy Hauser, the country music artist, you know, yeah, he he went, he was like the headliner. So he gets on the stage. It's like humid as shit. It's Okinawa. <laughs> he goes up there. He's a fuck. He's a big dude, man. Like I didn't know he was this big. He's a big guy. He goes out there. He sings like three songs, and he's like, "All right, I'm out of here." And he just fucking leaves, and everyone's like, "Encore, encore." And he never came back out. He did like That's ten like minutes of music and fucking left. We're like, "Fuck this dude, man!" Like he couldn't take he couldn't take the heat <laughs> or something like that. He just bailed. So no, we never had any comics come out though. But I know they do those like USO tours and stuff. Yeah, like that, we're so. like, I mean. Arnold shows up or Hulk Hogan or yeah, something, right? Yeah, yeah. But um yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting though. That's that's so I always ask everybody that's on here, like if combined with now, I mean it's we're still pretty new. You know, yeah. I started in twenty twenty two. Yeah. What would you say you think like top three comedians like who, that influenced you? Oh, and, yeah. and 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 it doesn't have to necessarily like project off of like the type of material you do, but yeah. just like, who do you think like inspired you? Uh, definitely. Uh, well, my, my favorite of all time easily is Louis CK. Mm. I just, I love, I've always said that Louis CK, he's like, he's like a philosopher, but funny. You yeah. know, I just, I just love the way that he can view things in such a, an askew way yeah. to make an observation about that. So just being able to see how he angles things to, to make it funny was always something that was really cool to me. Yeah. Um, uh, honestly, just the ranting of Bill Burr yeah. was always big for me. Just the, you know, he was one of the first comedians that I saw that I was like, "Wow, like this is 
this is crazy to see like how we can just go on and on about any kind of subject and yeah yeah um and then honestly a, a, a kind of odd one is is bo burnham bo burnham okay so i w- when i was stationed in, in maryland i didn't hear about him until he did that netflix the mutant inside music. have you seen his his older stuff too like his actual specials no i just heard the like the that's a music thing right yeah yeah, yeah. so that was that was a whole separate thing mm-hmm. he has he has two other specials uh that were really good um, I saw him, my roommate in Maryland showed him to me and he had like, he, he always talked about how he has like this whole stage and he was always like a performer. So yeah. he wants to use the lights and use the, mm-hmm. the, the, the smoke and the, the, all this kind of stuff. So he puts on this like one man show that also is music. Yeah. And I just remember thinking like, I could never think of, so- I could never do something that original, like that. Cr- and honestly, that made me not want to do stand up for such a long time. Cause I was like, I can never do that. Like Live that's insane. That, yeah. So just the fact that like his performance and his his ability to to put a message in with what he's saying and stuff like that yeah. was always very cool to me, uh, and I I still love rewatching his specials just to kind of get that you know the, it's such a cool performance you know I'd recommend those those specials that he did. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I never I I for some reason I always got Bo mixed up with T.J. Miller. Maybe it's okay. the same number of letters. Or yeah, something. maybe I, that's it. T.J. Miller was funny too. He he had a lot of fun stuff. He got in like a car accident or something like that. And it affected I, his personality. Yeah, or something he, like that. I think he got. I remember listening to. You ever listen to Honeydew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was talking about how like he didn't realize that uh, that he got diagnosed with bipolar. Okay, and that's why he's like so all over the place, yeah, and up and down. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's yeah, that's an, yeah, dude. It's so funny to me when because I've been doing this podcast for a while. Yeah, it's so funny that media fucks up the reputation of comedians so much yeah. that even when all that louis ck shit was going on every person he's my favorite guy he's my like that's oh, yeah. what i look up to yeah i don't give a fuck like i love louis ck he's fucking in terms of cancelable things it seems like his was a little bit less terrible yeah. i guess you know it's more yeah. sad than anything but dude, dude like, like and that's so what people don't understand like the average population comedians especially dark comedians they pull fucking pranks yeah and 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 and, and that wasn't necessarily a prank but that's he's just fucked up mind man yeah it's he's i mean yeah you just see you know he's 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 got that such a skewed vision of the world he's down on himself all the time it's yeah it can lead him to to some some weird places like that but but yeah he's always been i've always thought he's one of the greats um you know, I, I was never too big. You know, like I, I, I didn't get into com- like stand-up comedy even watching it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Not until like my twenties. Yeah. So I, I was never really influenced by like George Carlin or you know any any of those like like older like like generational greats and stuff like that. So. Yeah. No, I never. What well, I, I, I mean, I've mentioned this many times, but I was into comedy for a long time ever since the roasts and the Comedy Central presents, and I just like I always tell this to people that like I grew up in a family of women who humiliated everybody they just talk shit back and forth yeah in my family and i sort of really got into like jeff ross or anthony jeselnik because that was my defense just yeah. say the most vulgar fucked up shit <laughs> and they'll shut up yeah like i one like here's a here's a funny moment that i had so when i i played music for like 12 years in bands yeah. i still write shit but what happened is like I used to be that awkward guy where like I didn't get any pussy. Where I was like, I would go on, I would go out on dates, and I'd be like, so like, is it? Are we on that level where I can put my arm around you? Yeah, yeah. Like that nervous. And then when I got in a band, I just got new girlfriend every weekend. Yeah. And I'm not even being like cocky about it. But what happened is, my mom would talk shit about every fucking girlfriend. Like, she's got sideburns. She's 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 hairier than you. Like. Just random shit. And then what happened is when I started roasting was I had this girl that I had a crush on. And she was like half Brazilian, half Polish. So she looked. She was born with a Brazilian butt lift. Yeah. And my mom, she, I, I, I'm introducing her. In Polish, she tells me, she like she said in Polish, she's like, she's got way too huge of an ass to be Polish. She's got black ass or something. Ooh. And she didn't know that she was polish yeah yeah so, yep. she, so i snapped and i'm like ma 
your ass is so fucking flat. Like I, when when I look at that, I I'm just thinking about I want to put some a one sauce on filet mignon. <laughs> like that's what your your ass looks like two flabs of steak. And oh she's like, man! And my girlfriend's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, you know? yeah. And and she's just like, what are you what are you saying? And I go, ma, let me put it this way. I tried to do an open mic last week, and guess what? She's like, what? I go, there was a gay bartender, and he wanted he he told me that if I give him a hug, he'll give me a spot. So he almost kissed me. I go, you know what that means? She goes, no. I go, that means I got more dick than you in fucking fifteen years. Oh god, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and, and so it was just, it, it was just constant roasting. So that's that's kind of what got me in. But yeah, I was I was into it for a while. Like all those roasts exposed me to so many people that I would have never known about, like Greg Giraldo. Okay. And obviously Jeff Ross, Anthony Jeselnik. Um, you know, I can't think of. I like Tom Segura. Re, like a lot what before he got all big i was such a big fan of his first few specials he he, he kind of got a fucking ego yeah he, and lost he, he lost relatability too mm-hmm. and that's why you see louis ck he's still observing he's he's like talking about like the bible and shit tom segura's talking about his mansion and stuff like that yeah i, I actually saw tom segura in boston my girlfriend and i went out oh, there nice. we, we saw him how, how long ago was it this was in uh like november of last year or something like that i think yeah and uh, this was when he was on his massive tour, and dude, he he came out there, and you could tell that he was tired. Like he didn't want to be there. Yeah, he was so deep into this tour at this point. He was he had no energy. He got he got it up eventually, but yeah. I mean, it, I I was listening to his podcast fairly regularly at, at that point, and it was just all rehashed stories from the podcast. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's it just was lazy, and I I, I was it was very underwhelming. Yeah, so I, me and my wife saw him be right before he exploded and got yeah. back. basically it was right before he got all fit because of that right, joe rogan right. like fit october yep, bullshit. Yep, yep. we saw him at vic theater and he did awesome it was like one of the best shows i've been to and then like you know covid happened and then you know he got all fucking fit and big yeah, head yep and we saw him again in chicago theater and we're like this is it's not the same he's just full of himself yeah you know yeah so uh but yeah, his old stuff was great though i and i i loved all his old stuff i, I love his storytelling ability but it's just it's just lazier now you know yeah you know you know what else i mentioned to like a few people that were on here before you was like i didn't realize how many people in chicago comedians don't like sebastian maniscalco I'm not a big fan of him no no i'm not either yeah are, are you a fan of his i love him yeah, really man. yeah so it's i think it's a foreigner it's an immigrant thing or something like that I think immigrant so. parents and stuff yeah I mean, like, I can't knock it. You know, people obviously like it, but it's just not really my style. It's not relatable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, where I grew up, it was all immigrant Italians and Polacks. Like, yeah. And and we pretty much were the we were pretty much the same. The whole shit, like walking into your house and taking your shoes off. Type, yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, buying, you know, having to wear fucking cologne, but you buy it from Ross Dress for less. Yeah, you know? yep, yep. So, uh, but yeah, I liked and and, and yeah, it kind of kind of affected me because there's certain things that i do that i try i'm just being myself but i'm being animated yeah and i I, sometimes i feel like there's certain comedians who are envious because they can't do that yeah i definitely know that i can't Mm -hmm. i don't know that i would really want to but i mean he has it he has it down to a science yeah he he has a he's the best of doing that yeah yeah and you don't really realize how hard that is until you try it i don't like acting out anything i i make a you know any kind of motion like that i feel like a fucking idiot up here you know i yeah so to be because, able to be all about that is crazy. Because because what I realize is like you have to be one hundred percent yourself and fully confident so, in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So what he's doing, he's being himself. Yeah. Because what I'm saying, like like fucking um when you do it and it's overdone, you do look like a total ass. Yeah, and yeah. who I'm talking about is Joe Rogan. Yeah, oh there you go. He's yeah. So Humping fucking, the bar stool and stuff, yeah, screaming. Dude, it's and, and, and what what drives me even more nuts is that he he would talk about back when I would weld and listen to podcasts every day, he would talk about so much how he's in love with Sam Kinison. Okay, I'm like dude, you're a fucking copy. Yeah, of Sam Kinison. Well, and it's always so funny when he's like, oh, po- uh, stand up is my is my main thing. Like podcasting is number two. Yeah, it's like dude, stand up is not your yeah. main thing. He's just getting hyped up by all those other comics that want to be on a show and all that stuff. I I don't know comedians or just average population. The last time I heard somebody say. 
that he's a good comic to them. Unless yeah. they're on a show, like, right. Yeah. You know, you, or, you know, just, uh, I don't Kissing know, man. Ass, yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know, the, just... you know the other comedian that I that I know that I love, that I like the act outs, and he was actually my wife's favorite, was Chris D'Elia. Okay, and yeah. I've, like, you know, I've never actually watched a lot of his stand-up before. I've, I've had it recommended, but... I've watched like little bits, but I was I was never too crazy about the what I saw. Yeah, yeah, but um, so I don't know. Uh, we got a we got a roast battle coming up. Right? Yeah, we we do at Zany Chicago, November sixteenth. Yeah, a dude. roast battle Chicago. It's gonna be so much fun, dude. It's cool. First time at Zany Chicago. It's gonna be really cool. I you know it, it's 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 such a it seems like a really tight group that does those roast battles up there. So I'm excited to kind of get a little window into that and kind of see what it's all about out there. Yeah, yeah. You know I um. I remember probably even a year or two before I got into the Chicago, like started doing mics. Yeah. I was just Misitano. I was like baffled by how fucking good she was. Mm-hmm. I, cause I, cause I just love roasts and I just had it on my YouTube algorithm and I was just like, who the fuck is this? Because like I said, like what, what the general population gets compared to when you're in the comedy scene yeah and what i'm talking about is like for so long you had that joke of women can't be funny women are fucking horrible at com- and i'd see this shit like you know who would who 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 would you compare to amy schumer you know like or whitney cummings right it's kind of, it's almost kind of true when you look at it that way but that's what netflix is wanting yeah that's Those what they're shitty, putting out yeah because because then i'd see people like jess misitano or fucking sarah perry yeah she's very funny they're, they're i'm like how did they not have a special right and, right and even at the time so what happened to me is i went full-on gung-ho stand-up 2022 in march okay i think it's the same month that i started too yeah i think that's the very you same month at no uh comedy vault first time i went okay yeah and i um so like maybe five years before that i tried it the yeah. only reason why i tried it i i mentioned it on here before was uh there was a shitty fucking booker in Chicago who he just booked anybody for he ran this like show at this shitty little bar and here's who got booked. I was in a hippie neo psychedelic band. So the oh, so the headliner was a hardcore like hate breed band. Okay. We were before them. Yeah. A hippie fucking band. And then before that was a 70-year-old guy dressed up as a smiley face. He had a smiley face, like, mascot costume doing word-for-word Rodney Dangerfield jokes. What the fuck, dude? So, so when I saw that shit, I'm like, I could fucking do this, right? you know? And I remember I did. I used to do this mic. It used to be called uh, – it's not around anymore, but it was at this place called Independence Tap. It was called Blue Line Laughs. Okay. And I saw – there's a lot of people that I saw there that are still around, um, Cameron Little, John Torres. Okay. And – Rena Calm was there. Do you know who Rena Calm is? No, I never. Met. Dude, I saw that was the first time that I was like, "Wow, these Netflix women comedians are full of shit." Cause, right? Because because right. women are funny. Yeah, you just don't see them on fucking Netflix. Yeah. Uh, Rena is she's this chick. Um, she's from New York, and she like kind of did like five years there, got really big there. Then she went to, moved to Chicago for like five years, and bro, now she's I I literally cannot believe she's famous she should be the first she 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 got one of those modified sprinter vans that you just live out of. yeah 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 and she goes all around the u.s she's been doing it for like fucking 12 years no and i'm shit. just like this poor girl yeah. sleeping in these fucking shady walmart parking yeah, lots you yeah. know but yeah it was uh so that's what got me into it but um i just remembered there's a story i want to tell you because i know because you're a marine you're gonna take this dark humor yeah yeah well yeah. This shit happened recently, so this this is so funny to me because uh, I knew this guy in high school. His name was Steve Foss, and um, I had I, I I was in a joke metal band okay. with this guy uh, Billy Ritter. He's uh he does improv in San Francisco now, but we were both like goofballs. We were kind of like, you know, we're not nerds. We're kind of like we're we're, we're nerds. But we're punks, okay? Because we we pull pranks, you know. Yeah. And we were going to this Catholic high school in Chicago, and this guy Steve, he was kind of a douchebag. He was like, 
he was a juggalo like okay. he had a hatchet man tattoo yeah but he didn't like dress up as icp and though and, and he was just like this overconfident like wigger guy yeah but the thing that was weird was he was also super proud to be german because he was actually proudly racist oh it was the weirdest fucking thing in the world and he would always like anytime he was one of those guys that just overcompensated like we would chill we'd be you know were you folding your fucking legs like a bitch, yeah. man? Like, just like, you know you're playing you're playing a character. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And what's funny is, so I have a cat named Steven. Okay. And he absolutely hates me, absolutely loves my wife. Okay. And I was even writing a joke about it that, like, every time I come home, he, like, looks at me and runs away like, the gay basher's home. Like, Because <laughs> I, I was writing a bit, like, I'm pretty, like, he seems very flamboyant. Right, you know? right. So, so, and I used to just always, when I'd run after him, I'd go, Steven, Steven, Steven. Just fucking, like, when he hears me whisper that, he darts out Gone. of the room. Gone, yeah. And I was like, why is that so funny, but at the same time familiar? And I remember when I was in high school, this, this this guy Steve, this fucking racist juggalo. Yeah. What? Because he was such an asshole. Me and that Billy kid, we used to like, whenever we saw him, we, like, like we would be in class, and they'd be like, "You got to take this." Like, it wasn't even an exam. It was one of those things where like, like a census, you yeah. know. And he was always the last one to finish because he was so fucking stupid. Okay. So everybody was just going Steve. <laughs> and then he'd turn around and we just like pretend like it nothing happened. Yeah. And we did it so much for like two weeks. I think he, he got admitted to a psych ward because he no <laughs> shit. Because he no thought he was because he thought he was hearing voices. No kidding. <laughs> wow. And so and what's crazy is uh and, and, and he was just always fucked up. like he was one of those dudes I always talk about how like racist white dudes on Facebook, they take the weirdest fucking profile photos. Yeah, all those ones where they're like like right here, like right yeah. in their face and stuff like it's that. Horrible lighting. Yeah, they're shades all, on in their truck. Yeah, or, or always in a wife beater. Yeah, it looks yep. like they have a you know they're taking it with a flip phone camera. Yep, you know, yep. and that's what he was. And and, he, and his posts would be like, "Yo, anybody miss the joint?" And then it would be a picture of where like he threw old shirts on the ground and he mops it with a stick. Like, oh, like just like he's back. Oh, come on. You know, he's fucking like Brooks. This is how I process my traumas is by <laughs> yeah. posting this on Facebook. Yeah, on. so, and I found out recently that he, he fucking killed himself oh, like three boy. days ago. And I just, like, I was telling my buddy, my co-host Carlos about this and he's like, well, Maybe that's like maybe you, you believe in reincarnation, right? Maybe it's that fucking cat. Oh <laughs> no, dude! Oh, Yuck. that's the cat after all. That's why I didn't like you. That ma- it makes a lot of Steven. sense. Yeah. Huh. Oh my god. Wow. But that that just I, when I heard that, I was like, that is so fucked up. But it made me laugh so hard. Oh god. Um. But yeah, I mean, the only other stuff that I, you know, I was saying like you heard about this Hassan Minaj shit. I just watched a video before this. This is so fucking stupid. I, I was curious how you feel about this. Like, So I guess there's this. I, I'm, I'm glad I don't know who the fuck he is because he sounds like a moron. He sounds like a retard. Like, yeah. he, I guess it's this comedian who he recently released a book and they talked about how, I guess, so what he does is when he does comedy, you ever, you know like Hannah Gatsby? Yeah. Where she did like a whole special and it's kind of like a woe is me TED talk. Yeah. That's what he would do. And he admitted in his book that all of it was bullshit. They were all bullshit stories. Yeah. So now all these fucking people, they're like, comedians just lie. And right. I'm like, man, that's fucking, that sucks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, isn't that fucking. Embellish is one thing. Mm-hmm. But like, to, f- and that's weird that he even put in there that he just lied about all of it. Yeah. Well, well, th- well the stories he would tell were. What, so so here's the thing. The first time I heard about it was was from some. It was a super woke comedian from Chicago who posted about it. He's like, "Why should we hate him? All all comedians embellish." But then I was like, "I wonder what exactly he did." And I read about it. What he did was he made up all these stories where he was like racially profiled. One of one of the stories was that he was he this Hassan guy would have all these jokes about like white people and how white people are stupid or something. And so he put this story because of because of the white people jokes. The story that he said was he would get all this hate mail from white people. And that one day 
he's walking his kid and he opened up one of the mail and this white powder fell out and that it was anthrax and that they had to take his baby to the hospital and, and fucking like test it and that whole thing was absolute bullshit no shit i mean yeah that sounds kind of like bullshit anthrax really yeah Oh, for man. a fucking comedian that I've never even heard of. Yeah, like, that's like, that's not. You're not known enough to hate yet. It doesn't you know? sound like a joke either. It just sounds like a weird story. Yeah, it was fucking. Huh. Yeah, bizarre. I don't know. It puts a bad put a puts a bad uh, you know, uh, name to the face there. Of yeah, the comics. I've always like I I I I got called out by uh, when I was working in the union. There was a guy who was saying, "Man, you guys fucking embellish all your fucking stories," and I was like. You know what it is? Is it's a difference of some people, something they go through, and they have a half glass full outlook on it, half glass empty outlook. We have a half glass hilarious outlook. You yeah. know, we find the funny. Like one of the things, my brother's gonna fucking hate me for mentioning this, but when my mom died, you know, I said like I didn't have a relation, good relationship with her. We yeah. had to go to therapy because he did have a good relationship. Right. But we when we had to go to the funeral home, you know, they they tell you like. You know, this is what. Do you want makeup? Do you want open casket? You know, and I just remember seeing her, bro. They made her look like Will Ferrell in Night at the Roxbury. Like oh, they gave no. her this split haircut. Yeah, yeah. Way too much makeup, and I'm just like, I I was laughing at the funeral because I'm like, they should make something where the casket is like a Hallmark card. Yeah. So you open it up, and she's just like, what? Is oh love? man. <laughs> you know? oh. And 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 see that's. So what I'm saying is, like, in that story, yeah, it's a sad, devastating story, but I'm looking at it as a comedian, so I just embellished it on what's going, what the thoughts are in my mind. Right, you know? right. Well, and then it's 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 human nature to embellish anything. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you heard a friend tell a story and then hear them tell the same story to somebody else, and then there's a couple added details in there that definitely were different before? Yeah. You know, they tell you, oh, man, you know, I saw these five guys, you know, fighting in a Jiffy Lube, and then the next thing you know, he's telling them, oh, dude, there was a there was a riot at J-, you know and then you're like hold on i just heard this story yeah like, it's just human nature you just you just love to to hype things up a little bit yeah make it interesting yeah so but that but that, I, I think that's bullshit if he's if he's embellishing stories to try and get like sympathy from the crowd yeah that's a little bit weird that's fucking that's an odd way to go about it i'd say too like and to even do like a like it doesn't sound like they were jokes. They're just weird stories, like a TED yeah, Talk yeah. style. Like I don't know. Well, that's why he he was catering to like that Hannah Gatsby audience, where it's like, it's basically you know how like Dave Chappelle has like morals to his stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing it in like a outrage, I guess you could say left way. Okay. And so, but but it's still it's going for clicks, I guess. At some yeah, point, it, it it's stupid to me because it's fucking comedy. You yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's sort of like you're going into. You should do TED talks. Right. Don't go into an art where there's people who are going through bad shit going to see your show, and you're just making them feel sorry for you. Yeah, that's a little victim. bit strange. Yeah, you know, it's like, it, that, that'd be like if somebody, if a comedian's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm playing football, and in between plays, I'm telling one-liners. You know, yeah, hut, hut. guy walks into a bar, hut. right? You know, you know who actually did that was? Uh, do you ever see Neil Brennan's Three Mics special? No. He actually did that and pretty he's well. The, he's the guy who's like really skinny with the clear glasses. glasses yeah. yeah, he had that special recently. Blocks with all the like the interesting bad, the very white background blocks in it. But he had this special called Three Mics, and it was it was hit or miss on on how it was received. But he had three different mics, and he would be at on one at a time. And like one of them was for like regular stand up. Yeah. One was for like very intimate personal stories about his life and how he got to this point. Yeah. And then the next was for one liners. So he would be doing stand up and then the light would go and it would go back to him on the middle mic and he would just tell this very sad story about like how he was always in the shadow of somebody else and and this and that and how it ruined his confidence. Did you like it? It was it was interesting. It was good yeah. because like he would bring the whole energy down. You're like, oh, but you're learning about him. You know, yeah. like, wow, like that sucks. And then he would just come and do the dumbest but funniest one liner ever. Yeah, and yeah. everyone's like, oh, that's right. These are, these are jokes. So it was interesting. It was an interesting concept. But that's the that's yeah, that seems like a panic attack. Try, yeah. Trying to perform that. Yeah, to go to go from like emotional to serious to yeah. funny. Yeah, and he's always kind of been a boundary pusher with the way that he does stuff. Yeah, you know, I haven't really watched a whole lot more. I think it's the only thing I've ever seen from him. So I should give more stuff a try. But that was at least interesting the way he. That was the right way to go about it if you want to do that and yeah. not make up stories. 
stories while you're doing it, you know. Do you like uh, Harlan Williams? I never, no, I never really listened. No. You know what that is? No. He's, uh, you seen Half Baked? Ooh, no, I haven't seen it. Or, um, you seen Dumb and Dumber? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's the cop. Okay, Sipping right. Sipping on Grandpa's yeah. old cough medicine. Yeah. He's really awkward, but he's funny as fuck. He's one of, he's probably one of my top five favorite comedians. Okay. He doesn't, like, inspire me because he's so awkward. I would never be able to, like, do that. But right. He um he did a special because he's so goofy. I forgot what it was called, but he did a special where he's in the middle of a fucking desert and he's just doing it to wildlife. No and shit, it's the stupidest thing in the That's world. That's fucking funny. There's like That's there's funny. like a there's like a tortoise walking by and he does it to that, and then there's like a snake rattling by. It's so stupid. That's but silly. Yeah, it's boundary pushing to an yeah. extreme, but yeah. Wow. I actually uh, I went to Comedy Vault yesterday because. Um, that's my favorite mic. I wow. love it. It's been it's there's been a lot of audience around there too lately. So yeah, you know you know what's uh, what the fuck was I gonna say earlier? It was uh, I forgot what we were talking about, but we were saying um, oh when 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 uh when comedians do something wild or like pranky. Yeah you know, yeah yeah. What I wanted to do was were you there that night where there was all those oh the hockey the, players yeah dressed up as women yeah yeah bro I almost fucking got almost would have gotten kicked out because. So, so for for anybody listening, so Comedy Vault, I mean, it's like the I would call it the zanies of the burbs, essentially, yeah. And, dude, I don't know what it is, man. Every time I go there, I do well. I've never done bad there. It's the best clips, the best general audience, because there's nothing going on in that town. Yeah. And what happened is, so for people who don't know, there was the, there was like this gaggle of bros who started going there. This college hockey team. And they're just, they're just, it looks like a, it looks like a Matt Rife lookalike contest, you know? Yeah. And they just started bringing in people. So I liked it because they started bringing in people. But that particular night, they had rookies. So they dressed them up all as trans. So there's just like 40 hockey players dressed as trans. And I'm just like, like when the first five came in, I was like, maybe they're, tra-, but I'm like, no, man, they're way too in shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, and, and, but, um, what I was gonna do, cause what, what was, so here's here's how I analyze the situation, because there were a lot of comics that I was talking to. They're like, man, they're fucking up the show. They're trying to steal the show with their fucking trans fuckery over here, yeah. you know? Like, and I was like, you know what, what what I wanted to do, and but before I did it, I asked the managers there. I'm like, is it okay if I do this? And they go, you call the shots. You didn't tell me, because what I wanted to do, they kept they kept like talking about like you know that they got balls or whatever. I was gonna go up there and be like, you know, you guys think you got balls taking this show away? Let's fucking see ten of you guys up here, pull your dress up and show your balls to the crowd. Oh. And I wanted to do that, oh, but man. they but they left. Oh they got kicked yeah. Out before, and I'm kind of like, yeah. And then I asked the main manager. I'm like, what would happen? If-? She's like, yeah, you wouldn't have been able to. You'd be banned from here. Yeah, <laughs> that would probably been a bad idea, huh? Yeah, I but, do remember that. They, all, I was hoping to say it to them, but they all left, and because you know they're all dressed like ladies and stuff like that. And I was like, I was like, man, like those guys, those guys all dressed up like girls. Like it's all funny, but like one of those guys probably went home and was like, that felt good, dude. Yeah. That, I liked I just, that a lot, dude. <laughs> I'm quitting <laughs> hockey. Today. I liked it. I'm hold on to that outfit, you know. But I, I feel like I never, I never like. I'm such a fucking nerd. I got into hockey because I played NHL and Xbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I so I never got really into hockey. But my old guitarist, he's got two kids. He's he's a union electrician, so he's got dough. That's money. And he uh he's got like two or three kids that are on a touring U.S. hockey team, and they are dude. That thing is fucking weird. Yeah, it's all like really like proud but alcoholic like white parents yeah big time it gets fucking crazy it's expensive too that's why it's all the you know it's all crazy moms it's a bunch of karens pretty much yeah yeah hockey karens it's like whoever the fuck kyle rittenhouse's parents are (laughs) that's that's like all the hockey yeah yeah because because like um he told me these stories where like what was it called? Like there was a guy on his kid's team who, and these people are the kid, the kids that I'm talking about, they're like 17 years old. There was a kid on his team who he had, uh, two moms. They were, they were lesbians. Okay. And that kid would like illegally check and hit people and then call them faggots. Oh, but then you can't do it back. And then one time his kid said it back because he like, he did some really cheap shot, like he like grabbed his jaw and pulled it down or something. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. really fucked up thing. 
So the next time, you know how in hockey they have those uh, they have those water bottles with the long ass straw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was drinking it and he uppercutted the water bottle, so it cut open his throat. Oh, because the straw went in there. Yeah, but those and, and then and then there's a fucking white hockey lives matter riot. Yeah, because the parents oh, are fighting about you know who's being yeah who's being the shithead here. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, um, so so yeah, we got the roast battle coming up. I don't know what else. Uh, we could probably get a cup of coffee if you want. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. if you wanna if you wanna bait some more stuff. For yeah, me. absolutely, dude. Yeah, it's it's so funny because yeah, I just did the one with Ted. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. felt so bad. I was like, dude, you gotta prepare. You gotta because like, and I asked him the same thing that I that I told everybody. I'm like, is there any thing you don't want me to touch? Yeah, and man, that every I've had people coming up to me tell me like that I did really well. Yeah, but no, uh, I'm excited for it. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, I, I've I've actually never done a roast battle before, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun. My first one I did, I did with Chris. Okay, I don't know yeah, if you've yeah. ever seen that. Yeah, yeah, I saw it on YouTube, I think. Yeah, and it was it was stressful because I never did a roast battle, and I was just used to the Comedy Central roast. Yeah. So I wasn't, you know, when you're at a, the Comedy Central roast, it's just like you go to a podium, you say jokes, and there's no feedback. Right. Right. A battle is you're fucking you're, you're saying going. Feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was so like when you look at that clip, I'm still proud of the jokes I said. Like I think it was pretty good writing, but especially for my first battle. But it was just like I would say something, Chris would like, all right, you fucking fat Jared Leto, and I'd just be like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I didn't yeah. know how to react, you know. Yeah. So uh, and then the other thing that was funny too. What I told, so how do I put this? I went to, I went to Jerks because that's where I start off at Jerks at Joe's. Yeah, and I kind of asked people like, "Hey, what do you think?" What I what I always do is I write like forty jokes, and then I tell people like, "What do you think is the best one?" You yeah. Know? So I went and I did that. I forgot who the fuck told. I I I think I know who told me, and it was stupid advice from a stupid comedian. <laughs> but they're just like, "Oh, dude, don't do race stuff. Don't do race. It's Lincoln Lodge. They're woke there, but it's a roast battle. Yeah, they that's want what it's all you. About. To, they yeah. want you to go wild on there. Yeah. You know? But uh, so um, yeah. Even even Chris told me afterwards. Like we we went to go get a cigarette. He's like, "Bro, I am so surprised knowing who Wild Phil is." You you had like one race joke about me. That's so fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. And that was it was I really appreciate it from Chris. Like I owe him because uh um I I tell everyone um my wife grew up with Chris. Okay. So that's what kind of got me into doing stand up again because yeah. you know, I talked to him um and I was like, "Hey, you know, I didn't know you run a mic." And yeah, he's uh, him and TJ really like made me feel comfortable. They're good guys, yeah. man. They're really nice guys. Yeah. So but yeah, not not much else going on. You know, I don't know uh, if if you want to go anywhere else. You want to call it? Yeah, I'm I'm good, man. I uh, I don't got a whole lot going on in my life. So, but just just that Zany's uh, Zany's Chicago roast battle. Should yeah, be a good yeah. time. So I'm excited for it, man. Yeah, it'll be fucking awesome, dude. I, I like I I'm still like I don't want to think about it. That you know that it's there. That's, a few months cool. ago, yeah. I saw Dan Soder on that stage. Yeah, then yeah. Months before that, I saw Luis Gomez on that stage. Yeah. And it's now crazy. I'm now we're gonna be out there. That's, <laughs> like, that's gonna be cool, dude. I'm excited yeah. for it. So cool. Nice talking to you, man. Yeah, yeah, that's you as well, brother. Cool, dude. Cool, sweet man. Ah!